everybody, it's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, just checking in on you, just seeing how your week's going. Um, I always say this, usually I do these solos. Solos? I usually do this solo. I usually do this by myself. Let me stay within the English language that I have command of, but every once in a while, somebody comes to town. And, and, and they're, they're amazing, and I want to have them on the podcast. And this Thursday is one of those Thursdays, and we're going to welcome the legendary, the one and only, Mr. Robert Kelly. <laughs> What's up, man? Hello, Robert. It was very professional, man. I know you as Bobby. Yes. <laughs> uh, my old roommate. Yes. I've known you for fucking 30 years. Has it been 30 years? It has been 30 years. Wow. I've known you. The first night I met you was in... Well, wait a minute. Before we get into that... Let's get into the promotion here. Uh, Bobby Kelly has a new special called Kill Box that you can download on louisck.com. And speaking of Louis C.K., Louis C.K. made an amazing movie that I absolutely fucking love that you can also download off of louisck.com called Fourth of July starring yeah. Joe List and Robert Kelly. Yes. I loved your performance. Thanks, buddy. In that movie. I want to talk about it, but I don't want to give away your... Uh, we, were, we were actually... In uh, did our first movie together, Bobby. This is how well I know you. You have an eyelash, and it's really gonna just drive me nuts. Thank you. Sir. Make a wish. Make a wish. Uh, oh, I'm supposed to make a wish. Yeah. I hope it's a good <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyways, one of the more intimate things I've done with you. <laughs> Take an eyelash off your fucking face Dude. there. Yeah, we did our first movie together. You, me, and you did the first time we we're ever on film. In a movie, me and you. Yeah, everybody knows about the koala bear kid. It's the best. You can't find it. I can't find it. I want it so bad. I know you do. I want, but dude, it was so much fun. Oh, you were great in it. You were great too. I, I kind of, you know, I think my whole, in, my, uh, the scene that I did, I believe my, my inspiration was Alec Baldwin <laughs> in that movie when he went, who will protect you? <laughs> <laughs> like that's the level. <sighs> I was acting on. Somehow we were walking. I was following you down a corridor uh, at Boston uh, University. Yep. That, no, we were outside. You were following me down outside in a parking lot. We both had I, full heads of hair and you goatees. Were, we both had full hair and you we had goatees. It was the 90s. And I was a drug dealer. <laughs> you were a drug dealer from uh, another Southie or Irish guy. Well, I was definitely acting. Right. And you, uh, you, took, you killed me. You murdered me. No, you I shot didn't. me. You shot me at the end of the I movie. I shot you in the end of the movie. At the end of the movie, you shot me. No, I didn't. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. percent. Dude. A hundred percent. No, I didn't. I, there's no fucking. I would remember if I had a gun, a fake gun. You I shot me. I would have been like, I'm in the movies. Hundred percent. You I'm, shot me. I didn't. Dude. A hundred percent. Because I just. I will bet you a steak dinner. And a oh, fucking please. cigar. Bet me a. Well, bet why you, are you going to prove it? You can't find it. Bet me a Daytona. It. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, you know, a steak dinner. I can't eat. I killed you in a movie? That's so fucking cool. You killed me, dude. So at the end of the movie, I was in with the mob. You, now, so here's the thing. I did the world a service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, in with, I'm in trouble with the mob. I get away with that. Like, I find. What? I, I get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> get away all right i get away with that and then i'm walking away like i made it i did it and there you are and you go hey something like that and i turn oh, around that's right and you and you have the gun and you look right at me and you go boom and and i and i fall and i die end of the movie i'm dead so was it two days i did the quarter and then something else you did two so i think we had uh you know, because you, it, you like you not, have the clips on VHS somewhere. Yeah, my mom has it. You who? My mom. <laughs> <laughs> this is what when we used to live together. <laughs> I used to do this <laughs> all day long. He just says words weird. My mom, and I'd be like, "You what?" And then he would always do it the exact way that he said it. <laughs> That's why you're great. You could be a great voiceover <laughs> actor. Yeah. Get you in a Pixar movie. <laughs> Um, your mom has. Why does she have it? Because I gave her all my shit when I moved to when I moved to your apartment. Okay, I couldn't take anything because it was so we didn't have any room, and you had shit. We there. actually had a big living room. We had a big living room, but there's no place to put my shit. But it was everybody's living room. I came to New York with a box of shit, just a little box and some clothes. Oh, Bobby, little box. The old Bobby, little box <laughs> came to New York. 
With a dream. Little with Kango a, hat a, backwards. Oh, backwards. Yeah, goatee. Yeah, you're fucking, you're the Puerto Rican style. It was thin. I had the, uh, the uh, very, overalls. I was uh, wearing overalls, like Greer Barnes. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And, oh, gosh, gosh, but Bobby. Yeah, I had, I had my little things. So I gave all my stuff to my mom. And she got, she got my artwork when I used to go to art school, what all my you, paintings. Were you a painting? You were painting. Yeah, I did, I did art. I remember You're I went. such a troubled inner city <laughs> school kid. <laughs> How was that troubled? You guys art? always end up painting, <laughs> and then you die tragically. Right as you get cleaned up, you die tragically, and then all your work is worth like a <laughs> zillion dollars. All my work isn't worth it. I mean, dude, I looked at some of my stuff, and I thought it was so good, but it was terrible. What was it? Uh, a still life. What is that? Um, is a that still life a is house? like no, it's like a vase with an apple and a pear, and and you paint it. It's, you know, just out of curiosity. Yeah, like the amount of vases you actually see in real life. <laughs> Why do you guys always paint a vase, and where do you find vases? Dude, I don't. It was in school. It was in 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 in, in art school. So I they would have a vase. My my the first thing I painted, I had a, uh, my first charcoal class. Um, mm. Oh, you, was, you went in deep. You, went, you got all the way to charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> I was deep, brother. I was deep. It was a okay. nude model. It said on your schedule, nude model, charcoal. Man or woman? I showed up. It was a man. I was very sad. Oh. Um, it, was, it was uncomfortable because you, I was the worst. front row. And he... Yeah, big he, schlong. Really got to have a fucking big dong. Schlong. It was a big dong. And my first three drawings, because you have, you have minute drawings, 30-second drawings... Uh, and then like 10 second drawings. So to just see- The first 15 seconds is, look at that fucking size of that, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, the first three drawings, there was no dick. I didn't draw the dick. And he walked by, he goes, uh, Mr. Kelly, you have to draw the penis. <laughs> and he kept coming up. Uh, uh, did please. he slightly touch you on the shoulder? He when slightly he came up behind me. Yeah, Mr. Kelly, you have to draw the penis. So I had to draw <laughs> the penis. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a big one too. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was comfortable. I would think it would be. I wish I it still had, had those It would drawings. have to hang nice. Yeah. You can't go up with a, with a, with a grower. Well, that was my move, dude. Before I did stand-up, I would pick girls up. Because, you know, I was sober. I was going to meetings and stuff like that. And um, I you would... do a charcoal drawing of their vagina? I would... I would Call I would, it art? I would tell them I'm an artist. I'm going to art school, and I would love to draw you. And they'd be like, really? And I would get to draw them. And and then I we'd hook up. It was like yeah, a oh, Bobby was legendary. That's just yeah. like you know. You ever see a great mixed martial artist? And that's <laughs> like they can fight standing up on the ground. They can <laughs> submit you, whatever you want to do. They can go five rounds. They can go into the deep water. That was Bobby getting fucking ass back in the I mean, dude. I got nineties. Yeah, the 80s, 90, 80s, dude, 80s, 90s. Yeah. I mean, yeah, dude. You you were, yeah. It was fun. Boston Bob was just Boston Bob. Boston Bobby was a yeah. force. Yeah. The Phoenix used to write about your ex. <laughs> <laughs> the Phoenix. <laughs> like three people, three old guys from Boston got that reference. They used to write about Bobby's <laughs> pussy getting uh, excapades. Yeah, back in the day was fun back in Boston. Yep. And then when I got into comedy, of course, it went over to comedy. You know what I mean? But yep. yeah, drawing was like people. Girls love artists, man. You say I, I'd love to draw you. What? Yeah, I want to draw you. I'm an artist. Eh? Now, what do you, what, what is it about that? I want to draw. Does that, that feed into a narcissism? Do they actually falsely think that you care about them as a person? What is, what is going on? Well, there? I think it is. Yeah, it's them because it's like they're. they're you want to draw enough. me? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? You want to draw me? I had a studio in my basement. I, I lived with my uh, foster father in Winthrop, and I had a studio. With and, your foster father? Did yeah. Did he abuse you? No. <laughs> Did he beat you with a belt? No. Dad, I just want to foster dad. I just want to draw. I, I had a foster dad, not because You're I never need gonna to. make it. <laughs> me, <Dude>. and my, <laughs> me, me and my mom didn't we couldn't after rehab we just didn't get along. We couldn't live together. It was too much damage. So I had to go. I had to go on my own, but I couldn't like I I was in school. I didn't have because you put her through too much or I put it I put her through too much. When I was a juvenile, when I was going in and out of jail and all that shit, it was just too much. It's one of she, my favorite things you ever said on stage. What's that? You were on stage one night at the cellar, and you were doing some bit or whatever, and this woman in the crowd was making a face, and you're like, "What's what's wrong with you, huh?" And she goes, "I don't I don't know." No, no. He goes, "What's wrong with you?" She goes, "I don't know." He goes, "I, I just find you a little crass." And you said, "Oh yeah." You were like, "What what were you, what were you doing when you were 13, huh? Huh? Were you going to junior high?" 
He went to the prom, blah, blah, blah. He goes, you know where I was? I was in jail. I was in jail. So, yeah, I'm a little fucking crass. And the whole crowd laughed. And then you continued on. And I, and I remember going like, dude, that's what you need to talk about, man. You need to talk about when You're you were right. in jail, man. You're right. I do. I never did. I never did on stage. Yeah, but I find a lot of people that actually went through that shit don't, you know, want to revisit it. Yeah. It's just not something like, you know, everybody else is like, wow, man, that's like a fucking movie. And you're like, yeah, if you're reading about it, but if it actually happened to you, yeah, it's like, yeah. It's hard to make funny because, and then, and then you feel like you're making fun of it. And then there's kids that are in it. You know what I mean? That are yeah. still doing it. I did a, um, I do this thing on my podcast once a year um, where I raise money for charity. Like usually it's a children's hospital. One for year what? I, huh? You raised for what? I raised for charity. 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 And uh, one year I did it for the <laughs> lockups that I was in. And I brought them an Xbox. I brought them clothes. I right. brought them all this stuff. Because I remember when Christmas time comes, you don't get Christmas presents. You don't get anything. Mm -hmm. um, you get bags of shit that people don't want. And you have to rummage through it and get a coat and get you know something right. out of it. Um, I remember when I was I was in. They brought in a bag one Christmas. I got the remember guess, yeah, the, the upside down triangle with the question mark in it. Yeah, uh, I I got in a fight with a kid over a guess dungaree jacket because it was in a bag and we both ran for it at the same time. We both got in trouble and the juvenile we got like the like lock up detention in it. But I got the jacket. It was a great Did jacket. Was it acid wash? It was acid wash. Yeah, yes, man. Yeah, I remember with that. the with the question mark. It was all, well worth the fight. Was but it the big question mark on the back? Big question mark yeah. on the back, yeah. All the guys that, like, their parents bought them a cool car. Yeah. And they were banging, like, one of the hot chicks in my grade. Like, you know, there was only a few of them. But, like, that, that was, like, a status thing. If you had, if you could afford guest jeans. Yeah. Like, first of all, there, there was, like, a jean hierarchy. <laughs> okay? Like, the bottom line was, like, Gap. Yep. Like there Wrangler, was a, too. Wrangler and... Yeah, Wrangler. Gap and Wrangler. Lee's with bottom. Lee's, that was all bottom, bottom. feeder. And yeah. then you had to have Levi's yeah. was middle of the road. I'm not trying to encroach right. on your quarterbackness. Yeah. I'm also not a fucking nerd. You had Lee's. And then at the top of the food chain was if you could, uh, <clears throat> if you had on guest jeans, everyone's guess. like, dude, that kid's rich. Yeah, guess. Dude, or he's like fucking wicked rich. Jordash was pretty big too. He wears guest jeans yeah. every day, dude. Yeah. If you had a guest angry jacket, you were in. Dude, he has gazelle sunglasses. Remember, Remember gazelles? Yeah. yeah. That Remember was another Ferraris? Thing. Ferraris. When they gazelles. fold up. Yeah. yeah. That, well, that was a big thing. And it folded up and you zippered it around. You zipped it around. <laughs> yeah. I knew a guy that, that had all of that shit and a Volkswagen Scirocco with a CD player. And it was like, it was wow. like mounted, you know, the thing always like skipped. And I just was like, oh my God, that guy's fucking killing it. Yeah, man. You know, I had, I had Levi's. And an 83 Ford Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Ford Ranger. I have a Ranger now. Oh, yeah. I have a Ford Ranger now. Yeah, but the Ranger has come a long, Dude, but long the, way. The, the old Ford Ranger, that little truck, is the shit. If you I get the four-wheel drive one. I worked in a warehouse, and this guy had the four-wheel drive with the cool fucking rims. Yeah. And he had it in gray. And I want to say maybe a little pinstripe down the side. That was a fucking badass truck. It was yeah. a badass truck. It had a V6, which is all you need because the truck wasn't that heavy. Yeah. And it was great four wheeling and all that type of stuff. Uh, I want to get one. I want to get one. I have that tiny house up in New Hampshire. Uh -huh. I want to get uh, an old Ranger like that with just the two doors mm -hmm. and leave it up there, just to throw firewood in the kayaks, and, all that and, shit. And, and what about uh, over the over the winter? Where would you keep it? I keep it up there. I just get a, a car tent, put it over the top of it. Don't bears get into that shit? They always think there's food no, in there. No, 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 no. If there's food in there, they'll try to get in, but there's no food. Have you fine. run into bears? Bobby's yeah. a big outdoorsman. He's I'm, a fly fisher. I'm, yeah, I'm an angler. They call it an angler. An angler. Angler. I'm an angler. Angler. Yeah, when you go to fly fishing, it'll say anglers only. That means fly fishing only. They don't allow the worm fishing people in. Are they looked down upon because they don't, 100%. Have, they don't have the balls to get in the river? They're garbage people. You know, I heard one time there was a guy, <laughs> kidding. he's a, uh, an urban myth, you know, you wear those big fucking rubber pants. Yeah. He was doing it in the ocean. He waded out into the ocean yep, and a yeah. wave came yeah. and it filled up his fucking pants. You'll die. And he died. Yeah. Yeah, you'll die. You, you have to, like when you uh, fly fish, I have a stick. Why can't you just do this? Well, you have to, I, you have to, <laughs> yeah. Why can't you just step out of it like a cartoon? Dude, it it's, it's just sinks you down. You can't get up. Well, yeah, you got to, oh, because you can't get your feet out of the booties. Nope. Yeah, I carry a knife. You have Dude, to carry they a knife. Have tear away fucking 
<laughs> rubber pants like NBA players like getting off the bench. Yeah, you know, I mean, you need that stuff when you go in. I don't know why he's wearing it in the ocean unless oh it was cold. God. Dude, I just remember that time you had to tear away sweatpants on when Tony Moschetto was over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Bobby Kelly didn't wear underwear back in the day for whatever fucking reason. I just was... I so just, yeah. I forget what we were doing. We were all playing hooky that day. None, neither me, Tony Moschetto, and you, none of us had fucking anything to do that day. Tony was coming down to New York, yeah. and we were just going to fucking hang out, and I was. And it was a perfect su sunny day, and, and we were talking about how fucking awesome it was, and Tony's like, yeah, this is fucking great. I said, yeah, man. I go, it doesn't get any better than this. Tony said, it doesn't get any better than this, and you came out yeah. with your tearaway sweatpants, and you go... <laughs> it doesn't get be any better than this. And you fucking ripped him off. <laughs> Full frontal junk. Dude, me and Tony fucking died. Yeah. Died laughing. You just stood there uh, like that with your dick hanging out. <laughs> and then you walk in that little seating. <laughs> it was perfect timing. Yeah. I think you were in the little room. Yeah. Don't get any better than this. Don't get any better than this. You just came you, on, Don't get any better. I heard you guys revving it up. <laughs> I miss that, man. I miss, you know, I mean, I love my family. I love all that stuff. But I miss those days of just didn't we matter didn't where we were. Didn't matter what place, didn't, what your apartment looked. It just, we had a place to go and hang to the point that we went and did our shows. At and night. we were all struggling. So we were focused on that rather than that we were young and how much fucking fun we were having. I mean, yeah. dude, we had, we had so much fucking fun. I mean, ridiculous. Living up up yeah. there on the Upper East Side, dude, way back in the day. I mean, dude, I can't believe, like, I was trying to tell somebody, me and you used to rollerblade without brakes. Oh, we had the hockey ones, yeah. You just, we had no brakes. Yeah, you just kind of Could went. you imagine doing that now in Manhattan? With people texting? No. <laughs> no, I used to I used to fucking rollerblade and then walk down the stairs of the subway because I hated yeah. taking them off and then having to put them back on because, oh, I know, when I used to live on, I used to live on 79th in York, that was a nice apartment. And this was before, it was a studio, and they slammed a wall in it, called it a fucking one-bedroom apartment, and charged me for a one-bedroom. Then I got to know the chick upstairs. And uh, I never hooked up with her. Um, she fucking had the exact same apartment above me, and hers was a fucking studio. Right. And I was just going like, all right, do I have a case here? And I was just like, I, I know where I'm going in this fucking business. I'm not going to be petty about this shit. But they were charging me like 1400 bucks a month. Crazy. Way, this is in like 2000 or something like that for this fucking thing. And I should have been paying like seven, 800. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I, I kind of just let it go. But anyway, they didn't have the Second Avenue subway. So you had to go York. These are city blocks. York, First, Second, Third, Lex, down two streets. 78, 77. Yeah, I remember it was that. a motherfucker. But if I put the rollerblades on, I could breeze over there. But then it was always congested. There was a nice bagel shop right there. I still remember on the, uh, no, the north east side of the street. Mm -hmm. It was a great bagel place. And there was just no place to sit down, take them off, put them back on. So I would literally fucking walk down the stairs, hold them on the rail. And like, you know, you still weren't supposed to do that. But nobody gave a fuck because that's back when like people were yeah. like really shitting in public. Um, you know, before Giuliani came in and cleaned it up. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean it turned it into a giant bed, bath, and beyond. But uh -huh. and then we'd get off at Astor Place. Astor and then, Place. And then I would fucking roll the blade over, which was To fucking, the park, yeah. Yeah, over to uh, the cellar. And there was, you know, a lot of potholes and shit like that. But I remember feeling like, oh, I'm a fucking New Yorker here, man. I'm fucking roll the Well, we were, street. man. I mean, coming from Boston, we would go to, what, Nick's, Kowloon's. We'd run around, do spots, and then go to Dominic's every night. Yeah, I was telling. Who was I telling about that? Um, yeah, we used to go there. We do Nick's, and then we go. To, oh, Fitz, I think it was Fitzy. Yeah. We we're talking about it. We go to Dominic's because it would be like half. It would be a couple hookers or some weird people and us. It was and hookers, drugs. Uh, musical theater. All of those people getting out of the shows because yeah. it was it was it was weird. It was this weird thing where it was like the theater district and hookers and pimps. And comedians. Would you go into this pizza place? Yeah, bar. you'd go in there. And it was just like, I remember the late, great Kevin Knox yeah. and Gav would all be posted up over in the corner. That was sort of the Knicks section. Yeah. And then across the bar was sort of the, uh, you know, the ladies of the evening or whatever coming in for like a fucking drink or whatever. And um, and then there's just so, sort of weird. Remember the big fat guy? Yeah. He used to sit out there in the front, one of those guys whose legs were always like this because yeah. the belly had to rest. Yeah. Um, and we yeah. would hang out front. Too, we'd hang out front sometimes and just. I watched. I was eating a slice of pizza, pizza, 
with uh, Tony Moschetto again, and we watched the OJ chase. It was me, Tony, and a cop. Wow. And that was when OJ had the gun in his head, and he was driving down the thing, and the cop's going, he's going to kill himself. He's going to kill himself. Watch this. He's going to kill himself. And we were like, <laughs> holy shit, this is fucking unbelievable. It's fucking OJ Simpson. Um Anyway, but before we go too far back into like memory lane yeah, here, yeah, we always wait, wait, where did you uh, shoot this special at? Dude, the special, um, we did it in St. Pete because Louie came up to me. He's just that like- Florida? Yeah, St. Pete, Florida, Tampa. Okay. Tampa, okay. Um, and he was, he was like, I want to do your special. Um, I was like, yeah. He goes, where do you want to do it? I go either Boston or Tampa. Mm -hmm. But I think I, I think I wanted to do it in Tampa because during the pandemic, the, that that place saved me. You know what I mean? I could go down there and do some shows and actually make some money. Oh, and they the, completely blew it off. <laughs> oh, they blew it off. It was so good, dude. I love them. You, you know. needed a few states to blow it off if you didn't have the money to ride it out. I, if, if it wasn't for Tampa, if it wasn't for Florida, I would have been fucked. I mean, and they showed up. Did you? You should. Did you thank them in the liner notes? I thank a hundred percent. That's I thank, awesome. I thank Tampa. I thank Florida, the state yeah. of Florida. Yeah, because, um, and I knew that I had so many fans there because Mike Calter is like my my uh, number one best friend. And mm -hmm. he, dude, put it on sale. It sold out two shows in five minutes. Oh, it was awesome. it was just done. I was like, because you know, I'm like, fuck. What if I can't sell it out? It's this many tickets. You always get nervous with that. I mean, I do. And I, know. I don't know why you do, dude. Because you're fucking hilarious. I, I just get, I just do, and I did, and when they sold out, I was like, "Thank you, God." That's just such a relief. Yeah, and you know that too, dude. You're doing it's all relative. It is. You know, you're doing no. Fenway Park, and it's still like, dude. Yeah, they you know, have to oh, pay you can't it. say no to it. Do you ever hear that Elvis story? No, because that is the big thing. Every entertainer, if they're playing a fucking shoebox, yeah, or the biggest place ever, it needs to be sold out, or else you feel like a fucking loser. Like, like you can really play the Roman Coliseum, and if the upper bowl. Is empty, you're like, oh God. Yeah. I'm sliding down the backside, you know? <laughs> so You think you think gladiators went <laughs> yeah. you think gladiators went through it? Really? Dude, gonna, they pulled the I'm, curtain. I'm gonna die in front of half a fucking crowd here. I'm not killing a lying in front of a line in front of ten thousand people. Yeah. Oh man. That, have you ever been there? I, I, I went the first time this year. Yeah, I didn't take it the tour. Yeah. I fucking hate tours. Because there's always some nerd that's just way too into it and they just You went in by yourself. I went by myself Me too. and I just fucking checked it out and I didn't go down. Yeah. Because there's also something weird about that where it's like, I don't want to go down where all this suffering happened. Mm. Uh, where the fuck were we? One time we stayed at a hotel and they used to torture people in the basement. It, it, this, it was like, it used to be like a jail or something like that. It's like, you can go down there, blah, blah, blah. It's like, was yeah. that in Boston? No, this was, I don't know where it was. I was doing some run through Europe. Okay. And it was one of these fucking oh, yeah. buildings from whenever. So anyway, the Elvis story. <clears throat> so he's playing somewhere in Florida or something like that during, I think, his fat years or whatever. And, uh, you know, this is like 20 years after he hit. Right. At this point, you got the Eagles, you got James Brown, you got all these fucking guys that are just like selling crazy tickets. Leaf Garrett. Right. You Leaf know, Garrett. everything from pop to the... To, to, you know, that type of shit. Parliament was coming on, so he wasn't selling as many tickets. So yeah. he is at this, whatever venue he was at, um, they had all the chairs set up and it didn't sell out. Wow. And that was like a big fucking thing for him that he, he always asked, did it sell out, man? You know, and they would always have to say yes, right? So the promoter went in and he, he got guys on work release from prison to come in and take seats out and make it fatter. So they, they like, you know, he missed it by 1,500, so they took out 1,500 seats. Wow. So when, then when he asked, he said, did I sell it out, man? And the guy's like, every seat is full. And he's like, all right, great. Yeah. Great. And then he went out there. Like, I, you know, I, everybody has a, experienced that. Sure. It's, uh, it's you know. terrible. Yeah, but that's the thing that ma it, I think makes or break you as a comic, where you learn to not give into that. Yep. Where you go like, all right, but these people showed up, and I'm going to fucking murder, murder them. Murder. So it. they'll bring more people and... Uh, right. You kind of have to, and you have to be able to flip that switch yourself after a certain amount of years. You can't keep leaning on other comics to be like, dude, am I funny? Yeah, buddy, you're funny. Da, 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 yeah, da. yeah, you got to just do it. Yeah. You got you to gotta learn to be able to be like, like you know, all right. You got to, you gotta, I always look at it like the, the six round draft pick. Yeah. You see those guys in the NFL and they just have a chip on their shoulder yep. for the rest of yeah. their, their, you know, you didn't think I was fucking good enough. I, you know, I got signed for the league minimum. You got to kind of go into that mode. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, well, it's, it's you know, I, 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 I just love that town. You know, the people. And the crowds are great, too. My fans there. It's a cigar uh, town, too. It's a cigar town. It's just a, it's just a good town. I like it. And they it's showed up. It's a boat up. town. Yep. It's a fucking casual wear town. It's just, yeah. Ybor S- City gets a little shady at night. But they still got good cigars during the day. They do. But yeah. I, I, there's definitely, there's, there's, I don't know what hour it is. It's somewhere around between 10.30. 10 it's around 10.30. Around 10.30. 10.30, it's like, I'm too old to be out here. You got to go back to the hotel. Yeah. Get the fuck out this of is, there. This is for young yeah. people. I knew that when I came out. I, I was doing the improv over there one time, and I went in at, at, in the afternoon to do the shows, and it was great. Couples walking around. It was kids. Mm-hmm. I came out after the second show on a Saturday, and there was a cop with a mesh, a mesh shirt and his badge on the outside. And he was just like, just, just muscles, like from Miami Vice. Like some dude, I was like. I immediately thought of that. That uh, what was that um, Schwarzenegger movie? Yeah. At the end, he dude, throws this steel that guy, pipe through yeah, the that guy. guy. Except that guy wasn't really in shape. No, he wasn't. He was. Yeah, he was just uh, original Superman in shape. But dude, yeah. he. <laughs> dude, that's back where if you weren't in shape, they get put. You gave you a mesh shirt yeah. and fingerless gloves, yeah. and yeah. you could still have that the was, granny arms. They're like, was, all right, that was barrel chested yeah. in shape, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, I came out. This cop was sitting there. Oh, the great. other guy had a leather vest on, and there were just these <laughs> undercover cops that were, and just anarchy. And there was cops on horses, people coming up the street, screaming and it's yelling. Like cop Braveheart. <laughs> it was nuts, dude. It was nuts. So I went back to the pool uh, where the hotel was. They had me in the shitty hotel over there, and it was right off of the street, and just helicopters going. I'm sitting in the pool. <laughs> With Pete Lee, it was Pete Lee. It was the other Grand Theft Auto's going yeah, dude, on right outside. I swear outside. to God, dude, we were just <laughs> sitting in the pool, scared because you could hear whoop 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 whoop, yeah. and just da, 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 da. yeah, dude, it was nuts. <laughs> it was crazy. Hey, people in Tampa, they get after it. Yeah, you can't get mad at that. But like one of the great things though that I've enjoyed, as far as like you know, watching you just keep getting better and better, and also you're one of the few guys that I know is always a better person. Like, you're on, like, the 18th version of Bobby Kelly that is a better version. Like, most people, you know, you meet him. Yeah. 20 years ago, you met him. I was just yeah. talking about this comic, uh, unfortunately, passed away, David A. Arnold. And every time I saw him, he was a better version of himself. And there's, like, so many people. You meet him in 1999. Yeah. And then you meet him in 2021. And they're the same fucking guy. They yeah. just have a double chin and they're fucking gray in their beard or whatever. Right. And they look, look older. But you are always better. But, um, oh, my God, I literally forgot the compliment I was going to give you. No, I know what it is. Sorry. My old brain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just patiently waiting. Is um, is I feel like you've aged gracefully, where you understand like it's a really big thing that I feel like, especially people in show business, where you kind of live in that Peter Pan thing. Yep. And you're old, but you don't think you're old because everybody else is sort of putting off getting married and mm-hmm. having kids and, and like uh, you know taking responsibility. But they, like one of the greatest fucking things is allowing yourself to be old. And getting the fuck out of the way of young people. Get the fuck out of their way. Let them have their good time. Yeah. Don't be the creepy old guy trying to hang out or ruin yeah. their good time yeah. and be like, this isn't music. Get the fuck away from them. Find where the people are of your generation, yeah. which is usually home. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, it's usually some during the day shit. Like, you know, they have a wonderful coffee <laughs> shop. <laughs> <Down on. laughs> no, it's true. But it, comics, I, I, some comics, the best to me, the best part about being a comic is that we get to do that. That that's a cool thing for us. To gr- we can age gracefully. We can just be who we are on stage now. You know what I yeah. mean? But no, but a lot of people are afraid. Afraid of that. The thing about aging is, is all you have to do is just say you're old, and then it's out there, and then it's like, oh, yeah. and everybody chills. Yeah, it's like coming out. I just yeah, this guy. Yeah, it's exactly. Like coming out, yeah. dude. <laughs> I'm gay. Nobody I'm, cares. I'm in the age closet. Yeah, man. yeah. These people that are like trying to like fucking, you know, you know some people <laughs> trying to fucking stay young, and it's like. It's like, dude, it's a rap. Yeah, you don't have to. It's oh, it's fucking. You can over. literally go on stage and make fun of yourself, and everybody will embrace it and love you for it, and thank you because they go through the same shit. Yeah, like if you do a college gig, and yeah. you try to go out there and be young and cool, it is just cringeworthy. Yeah. But if you go out there, and just steer into being so much older, you goddamn kids with your fucking scooters laying around, <laughs> like they love it. They just think you're some idiot yeah. uncle. Um, no, but a lot of people. They uh, they don't get, dude, I have a fucking old man sweater now that I love. Dude, I was just looking at sweaters today. 
I was gonna buy with the buttons. The buttons, yeah, a dude. jumper. Is it called? I bought it in Galway, Ireland. Dude, I, I, every it, time I put it on, I'm like, it's too itchy. And once I just push through that 90 seconds of it being itchy, yeah, it's fucking phenomenal. And 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 I want a my smoker lovely sweater. wife trashes. I have one. Oh, I want one. Yeah, I want a smoker sweater. I, I can't. I, and I have the little the little scully cap so I don't catch a cold with my bald. Do tank. you really? Yeah, and I just I just sit oh. there and I smoke my cigar. Yeah, and you know I learn my learn. I'm trying to learn French. Right. I just fucking. Why are you trying it. to learn French? Oh, you know, because uh, because uh, I I really want to be in a French speaking only movie playing a gangster. There's something I've always loved the language. My wife loves it too, and we just like going over there. But like, I, there's some fucking French actors, dude, that I I will put up against anybody else, and I just want to play a f you know somebody gets dude, do you, fucking. Can I? Whacked. I was talking to somebody ab about you, mm -hmm. uh, uh, because dude, you're like. Have you ever had your IQ tested? I would be afraid to do that. <laughs> Dude, because can I just say something? Dude, you, you fly a helicopter, which is one of the hardest things to learn how to do. Not if I did it. What, are, okay. you, what are you talking about? If I can do it. Dude, you rode a motorcycle. Dude, rode a, it's, it's, that's it's, way harder, dude. Because One up, five down is not harder than a fucking helicopter. Is it five down? Is it one down, four up? I had, I had one up, five down. Oh, okay. Yeah. But here's, it's way harder because... You have to like not wipe out while there's people. It's not like there's people texting while flying next to me, and I'm like, dude, 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 <laughs> you're up there. <laughs> you're falling. You're falling hundreds of feet. No, you enter in auto rotation. What is it? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, instead of going, bop, 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 you just go. <laughs> in theory, I mean, granted, you've been going like. What is it? <laughs> The second it happens, you slam the collective down and you fucking yank the cyclic back and to keep your RPMs up because that's the only thing keeping you alive. You pick your fucking spot. If you're coming in too fast, you turn sideways. You add some fucking drag and you yell out the window, get out of the way! No cars, no cars, no cars! Right through an intersection. And it's a hockey stop. Ah, I get you. Then, uh, motorcycle, you just, go, you have no, you're just going. No, yeah. you wipe out on the road and then you roll over and look up. And it's like, hur, hur, hur. <laughs> fucking truck runs you over. Yeah. Just your legs. And you're like, yeah! Trying to crawl off on your elbows. <laughs> and then somebody else comes by and, you know, you, know, you live. Uh, you live. That's the worst. Yeah. yeah. Dude, you know how bad I want a motorcycle? I, I just want, like, I, I really, uh, I love, it's weird. I have a, like, a weird taste in motorcycles. I love the fucking Ducatis, but I also love a Harley Road King, right? So I, I want like, you know, you I want feel to be like comfortable. as an American, yeah. at some point, you have to ride a fucking Road King. I, I'm, gonna get a, I'm gonna get a trike. I'm gonna get the three Bobby road. Kelly, everybody. Bobby Kelly, this yeah, is the Thursday afternoon just before Friday, Dude. Monday morning podcast. He has <laughs> a kill box. <laughs> On LouisCK.com, 4th of July. He loves Tampa and he wants to get a trike. Dude, the, the, yeah, have you seen the trikes? Do you know what I'm talking about? Listen, you can get a trike <laughs> if you rode a motorcycle for 30 fucking years and you, you have the stories and then you have that big fucking I rode a Harley. I, and you're in your 60s yeah. and I get it. I don't I can't, I don't want to fucking tip over. I get it. All right? All right. But you had a Honda Shadow. <laughs> What? You have not earned a fucking trike. I'm sorry. All right, we're going to do... You're right, you're right, you're right. Every time I love you, Bob, you push you're, me you're away. You're right. <laughs> you're right. No, you make a good... All right, I'm going to do... You, you want to hear something funny. Yes. You want to listen to me read out loud. Yes, okay, here's the advertising here. It's Solo Stove, Bob. I have one. The stove I for love loners. It. I have it. Serial killers love this. <laughs> you know, after a fucking murder, they can sit there by themselves... That's the last one. I ain't doing this anymore. <laughs> Is that the copy? No, no, it's not the copy. All right, Solo Stove, everybody. You know, there's something special about fall that brings us closer together. Yeah. And with the smokeless fire pit it is from smoke Solo Stove. Dude, this thing should be on the prices right with one of those hot chicks I'm doing that. I'm telling you, dude, it is smokeless. Or one of the in-shape guys they have now yeah, because yeah. they're progressive. <laughs> but why do they keep all those toxic old games, Bob? <laughs> um, creating those moments is easier than ever. Enjoy all the warmth and comfort of a fire pit. This is great for watching college football outside, okay. away from your wife, smoking a stick. Plus portability, quick setup, yep. and cleaning, and best of all, no smoke. No smoke. No smoke. No, no dodging smoke, it. Dude. No picking no. up the chair. Your neighbors aren't complaining. And moving around? Yeah. 
It's good for LA. Right. That's right. Keep your shoulders down though. Yeah. Uh, summer may get all the excitement, but nothing beats the great outdoors during the fall. Upgrade your backyard with the solo stove, fire pit, and create story worthy moments. Without the fireside fumes. I thought I said without the female fumes. <laughs> Stainless steel construction designed to regulate airflow and burn more efficiently. So little, sm- so little smoke, you wonder, how's there so much fire? Solar stove fire pits are brilliantly engineered to be easy to use, and they're built to last. Yeah. Easy and to light. You get it, man. They're fucking awesome. Prepare for your best uh, outdoor memories yet and save big during the solo stove fall event. Plus, use promo code BURR, B-U-R-R. At solostove.com to get $10 off. That's solostove, solostove.com, promo code BURR for $10 off the fall event deals. All the big college games are coming up. This is the stove for you. All right, here we go. Masterclass, Bob. All right, Masterclass, everybody. Masterclass. <laughs> This, we never send that part of it to them. <laughs> oh, they just show the read. Masterclass. Masterclass brings you inside uh, the, of the minds of the most qualified people in all areas of life with Masterclass. You can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own place. Uh, you can learn French pastry fundamentals. Ooh, flaky crust. How do you do that? Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk to Jacques Le Mans. Uh, from Dominique Anzel. Improve your writing skills from David Mamet. David Mamet will literally tell, talk to you. Or Judy Bloom. Wow. She wrote all those books that the chicks read on the beach. Or learn <laughs> space exploration from an astronaut, Chris Hadfield. Chris Hadfield. He's going to teach you how to go into space? So, it sounds like something else. Sounds, sounds like, like you need an app singer. or something. Yeah. How do I get up there? <laughs> you need a helicopter. You get your own rocket. Yeah. Chris will tell you how to do it. Uh, with over 150 classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access every, to every class. As a Monday morning podcast listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Dude, they have drummers on that too, man. I'm oh, really? You, it's incredible. Go to masterclass.com slash burr now. That's masterclass.com slash burr and get 15% off Masterclass. All right, this is the last one. Simply safe. Simply safe. Simply safe. Isn't that what we all want to be? We want to be simply safe. I feel safe with you, Bobby. I don't want to be hard safe. I want to be simply safe. Yes. I don't want to be complex safe. No, complex safe. Wrong word. Hard was the wrong word. You're correct. Complex. We both went to summer school. Yes. All right. If you thought about protecting your home and security but haven't been waiting for the right time. What? (laughs) <laughs> if you thought about protecting your home with security but have been waiting for the right time, you'll want to listen up. All right? Quit your chatter. Here comes some information you can use. Right now, listeners of my show can get 40% off Simply Safe's award-winning home security. Not only was Simply Safe. Do it better. Simply Safe. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> name the, be- <laughs> the best home security of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report. I use and trust Simply Safe to protect my own home and my family because at Simply safe. Your safety is the only thing that matters. It's great. I feel like I'm doing the news here. Uh, when a threat is detected, Simply Safe monitoring professionals promptly contact you uh, and dispatch first responders to your home, even if you're away or unable to respond. Uh, it's a lot there. <laughs> 24 7 professional monitoring. <laughs> 24 7 professional monitoring costs just under a dollar a day. That's less than half the cost of ADT's tra- uh, traditional professional installer plan. Simply Safe blankets your home security in, perfect- in protection with advanced sensors for every room, window, door, and HD uh, security cameras for inside and outside your home. Bonus, too. You can see all the varmints that walk along the side of your house yeah. and try to get into your uh, trash cans, trash cans yeah. and little fucking back and forth between coyotes and raccoons. You have your own nature show. Smarter ways to detect motion <laughs> that only alert you when a threat is real and even hazard sensors that instantly detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. Don't miss... Uh, one time this guy was making a frozen pizza and he fell asleep. He was probably doing drugs. And uh, the Simply Safe saved his ass. No shit. He would have died because of an LEO's fucking grandmother slice. Mm. Don't miss this chance to save big when you promote, protect your home with the best. Get 40% off your order when you visit simplysafe.com slash bird today. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes. That's simplysafe.com slash bird. There's no safe 
like Simply Safe. Right. Wow, that was good. Very professional. That, wasn't bad. that was great. That wasn't bad. That was great. You just have to seem excited. I so I Pause. can't get a trike. I can't. Why? I I, I, well, I'll, I'll wait till I'm 60 something. I think that was the plan, anyways. Because me and Don wants. I think my wife is into bikey guys. She likes that tattooed guy. She mm -hmm. likes motorcycle guys. I think you got a kid, dude. You should get a trike. With well, like the two tiered seats. It's the two tiered seat. We just go cruising on the bike. You know what I It'd mean? It'd be fun. Who makes it? Um, a Harley makes one. Honda makes one. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the second one. Harley makes one. That's yes, they do. Thank yes, you, thank America. You. Stop. Thank you. Yes, yes, America. Stop right there. Right. <laughs> you know, you're, you're going to get a Japanese trike and ride around <laughs> New Hampshire. Good luck to you, sir. <laughs> Live free or drive, and you're gonna come out there in a Honda trike. <laughs> you make you're making valid points today. I, I'm, I'm just looking out you're, for you. <laughs> you're making valid points. I am. I'm gonna call you more often. Shinola, a <laughs> Shinola, American-made watch, right in Detroit. <sighs> Boom. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, Skydweller, Rolex. I, sorry, man. Jesus Christ! Look at that thing. Fucking Kevin Hart in the goddamn building here. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Shiny there. All right. Well, Bob, usually yeah. I would continue to talk, but we're going to go smoke a cigar. We're going to go smoke a bat. We're going to go smoke Can a bat. Can we get a little lunch first? All right. Whatever you want to do. Okay. Yeah. A little, just a little something. A little something. Just because you smoke nothing a bat crazy. with nothing in you, you get a little sick. You get a little sick. Yeah. And you don't do you know where we're going? Safe. Yeah. It's I'm very yeah. excited, dude. All right. Uh, thanks for having me in, dude. It's good to see you. Yeah, great seeing and you. And I know you do this by yourself, so it's, uh, it's an honor to uh, have you in the studio. Yeah, and, and you know what? I actually made a dream come true that I finally did an infomercial with you. I've always wanted to do that. Was I, that I never told you that. I oh. never felt close enough. I'm glad this I've version of me <laughs> made you feel comfortable enough to tell me that, dude. I know. Sorry, now we're creeping everybody up. Yeah. Bobby Kelly, everybody, check out Killbox. You can get it on louisck.com and check out a really, I fucking cannot say how much I love that movie, Fourth of July. Yeah. If you're really just into just a great fucking movie that is just perfectly executed, yeah. directed by Louis C.K., starring the one and only uh, Bobby Kelly and Joe List, uh, Fourth of July on louisck.com. Killbox shot in your favorite city, Tampa, Florida. Tampa. Shout out to them. Uh, that is it. Uh, have a great weekend, you cunts, and I'll check in on you. No, no, I'll see you on Monday. There we go. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Byrne. It's the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, October 27th, 2014. How the fuck you doing? Boo, 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 boo. Um, I'm actually recording this thing late. I'm recording it late, and then I got to go to work. I got to go to work. Oh, Billy Day Job. Oh, Billy Day Job. Oh, oh, Billy burning in at both ends. You know? Something's got to give. Why does it always have to be us? Why do you put your work first? <laughs> um, anyways, uh, I don't know what the fuck that was. I am sitting here, as you can tell, by the echo, echo, echo. Maybe you can't hear it, but I can hear it. I'm sitting in my living room because I'm doing this Monday morning. 8.30 my time. So this is still a Monday morning podcast where I'm from, despite all you selfish douchebags around the globe, around the planet, you know? Hey, people do that thing. On this, on this beautiful blue, blue sphere that we call Mother Earth, I just, well, that's when you know when somebody's going to lie to you. They start shaking their head when they're giving the speech. I want to thank everybody for gathering here today. Well, I got to tell you that, you know, what we got coming off, and they start shaking their fucking head, you know? Trying to charisma their way through fucking stealing all the tax dollars. Um. Anyways, I didn't do uh, I didn't do shit this weekend. I didn't do any stand up. Did I? No, I didn't. I just fucking stayed in trying to catch up on my goddamn sleep here. But I've been doing stand up during the week, and I got a big stand up gig coming up. I'm doing uh, the twentieth. Um. Annual uh, Comics Come Home benefit for uh, Cam Neely, the Cam Neely House uh, put together by Dennis Leary and the always adorable Jimmy Serpico. Always adorable. I challenge you to find a picture of Jim Serpico where he doesn't look absolutely adorable. That is an adorable middle-aged man. Um, I got that coming up, so I got to make sure I'm on my game because I'm going to be following a bunch of monsters. I think I'm going on last, you know. 
And that is the deal on those things. You don't headline one of those. You go on last because you're going on after all headliners. So um, there's not a lot of meat left on the bone, if you know what I mean. I can't really see myself 10 comics in being able to bring up Ebola and it's still a fresh topic, if you know what I mean, right? That's why I'm doing a bit on the mumps. Yeah, the forgotten one. Dude, I got to be honest with you. I am so fucking sick of all these diseases grandstanding during sports in every fucking place you go. Like, it's, it's all this, this goddamn, they're marketing diseases now because they're trying to get your money for research. Somewhere in there, I know there's a good thought, like they're trying to cure the disease, but there's a lot of Lexuses, Lexuses being bought off of that money. You can't tell me that there isn't because I don't give a fuck how much you give a shit about stopping a disease. At some point, you want a nice house and you want a nice car. And if all you do is try to find a cure for that fucking thing, at some point, you're dipping into the aspirin fund, right? Jesus fucking Christ. Combination of this and, and, the, and, the, and the, the, the fucking getting reprimanded when you watch a football game, no more, no more, no more. Go fuck yourself. I'm not hitting anybody. The fuck off my TV. You fucking dopes. What do you think? There's some wife beater at home who's going to see the commercial and then be like, oh, okay. You're just going to erase 20 years of bad parenting with some dumb fucking commercial with your black shirts on. It drives me up the fucking wall. You're talking to me like I'm two years old. And you're also talking about this, this major fucking problem as if it's like, you know, why don't you just fucking hire one of those planes with the banner across it and just tell society how the fuck they're supposed to behave? I'm sure that'll solve something, too. Yeah, it yeah, just fucking drives me nuts. The whole fucking thing drives me up the fucking wall. Stand for cancer and everybody's standing up with the name of somebody that they had. All right. I, I, who doesn't want to stop cancer? Who doesn't give to it? Do you got to interrupt a fucking the World Series to remind me that there's people dying of cancer? Sports is supposed to be my safe haven. <laughs> Maybe Mike Golick was right. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, that's my Mike Golick. And, 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 and. That's my Mike Golick. That guy is a stammering jackass. You know, you know, you're dumb when you have to constantly bring up the smart school you went to. <laughs> <laughs> fucking dust. <coughs> I know you got a lot of you guys are thinking right now. Bill, have you been smoking a lot of cigars lately? Is that what, what it's for the uh, the cough? I have not. All right, old Freckles here actually went, I've gone eight days without a cigar. And now it's out of my system. I don't crave it right now. I let the humidor dwindle down. Is that the right word? Humidor? I say humidifiers for your voice. Humidors for cigars and humidity is that thing that people who don't understand weather get mad at when somebody says it's it's not the heat, it's the humidity. And then they go, oh, that's that's like saying it's not the bullet, it's the gun. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. If you fucking read up on humidity, you dumb fuck. If you got out of the East Coast or down South and you headed out West and you felt a dry heat versus that ungodly fucking moisture... That is in the air when you have humidity. You know, basically what happens is, is when you have hot air, that's, that's what's known as a low pressure system. And the molecules get larger. <laughs> it really doesn't, all of it is if it's, there's just really no moisture. You know, like if you live near a fucking desert. It doesn't make a difference how fucking hot it is. There's no fucking moisture to, to extrapolate, you know, and bring into that fucking air is essentially what's going on. Okay, that's why it's awesome to fucking live out here. Now, I don't understand. We live near a fucking ocean. I don't understand how some of that water doesn't get in the air, but God knows it doesn't. It does not. We live right near the Mojave Desert. I don't know what it is. No Santa Ana winds comes down through the fucking canyon. I think it just dries everything the fuck out. Like a giant hair dryer. So when you're out here and it's 90 degrees, I mean, it feels more like when you walk to your car that God has a microscope, not a microscope, a fucking magnifying glass right on the top of your skull, right? As opposed to when you're back east. So it's like one part of your body is just like, oh my God, I got to get in a fucking car. As opposed to when you're back east 
where you're just walking out with your arms to the, you know, straight out. Like you got some, like you're nailed to some invisible cross, just walking down the street, like, ah, ah, you just can't escape it. You take a shower and two seconds later, you're all fucking soaking wet again. Bill, we understand it. All right. I didn't even explain it well, but I'm a moron. Anyways, um, incoming. You hear that? Jesus Christ, that fucking plane is close. These fucking people out here are, are, are lunatics. The way they fly. There's fucking people in helicopters and airplanes. They fly like 800 feet above the fucking ground. It's just like, where are you going to put that thing? If you, God forbid you had a fucking engine failure. Huh? You're going to try and land here with all the fucking wires? Um, all right. I'm all over the place. I need to focus here. Um, anyways, I had another big sit down with my, uh, my contractors and all that type of shit. And we're finally... Uh, on our way here. We're on our way. We're finally getting to the final, uh, I'd say, 20% of the job. That's how fucked up my downstairs was. Slash all the other bullshit that happens when you're building something. Um, you know. You know what kills me is right up the street. Some lady bought a house. And gutted the whole fucking thing. And she has workers over there seven days a goddamn week. However, I know what they're doing over there. They're flipping a fucking house. I'm not flipping a house. I'm having a hundred percent quality. You should see. You should see the fucking plumbing I got in down there. All copper piping. Ah, it's just fine. It's gorgeous. It's almost. It's almost a fucking shame that they're gonna close up the walls. That's how fucking beautiful the work is that's been done downstairs. And this house used to basically be a house on top and a tree fort down below. It is now an absolute fucking fortress. And someday when I go to sell this thing, I can, I can look the person in the eye that I'm going to sell this to. As opposed to the fucking... I don't even know. I, I honestly think the people who lived here before are just... I don't think people even understand some of them. Some of them are actually out to fuck you over. Okay? Like whoever put that fucking tarp in downstairs to hold back four feet of dirt. Or I mean four feet high level of fucking dirt. Or maybe three feet. I don't fucking know. All I know now is I got a concrete barrier going all the way around like I'm supposed to. Everything's up to code. I had a master electrician come in, rewire the whole fucking place. I got copper piping going through all the guy. We chased the pipe all the way up as far as we could go. You know, there's a few galvanized pipes, sections of it here or there. But generally speaking, um, you know, this house is going to be uh, it's going to be rock solid. And I I was actually. So fucking depressed with how long that this shit has been taking that um, I, last night I actually went on the uh, the internet and I was looking at other houses like, fuck this, I'm out, you know? You know, like when you're in a relationship with someone that you just love, okay, so you can't break up with them, but every once in a while you just start thinking, you know, what if I just went out and I bought a fucking Corvette, you know, and I just got a scarf or some shit and just started driving around and just lived for me? I started doing that with my house last night and I just looked at all the other houses and it's just like... I can see it. I can see it in all the houses I like. I like old houses. And every one of them now, I don't see the beautiful house with all the character anymore. You know what I see? I see wood rot. I see cloth wiring. I see galvanized pipes. I see a gas leak. You know, that's, that's all I see. I see a fucking new roof. I see flashing that wasn't put in properly. I see all of that. That's all I see now. That's all I see. I see the cracks, you know, on the walls. Knowing that, you know, I see windows that aren't going to close fucking properly. That's what I would do now when I walked in to a house. If I looked at a house now, I would start opening and closing windows. I'd check the water pressure. I'd go under the house, you know, smell for gas and all of that type of shit. And you know something? As much as I did all of that, I'd still get fucked because you can't stick your head in a wall. And you have no idea what the fuck's in there. You got no idea. You've got no fucking idea how many times over the course of the life of that house, some fucking varmint or some goddamn rodent got into the fucking wall, chewed on what, left a bunch of fucking shit pellets. I'm telling you, it's horrific. The only thing you can do is maybe buy uh, a brand new house, a house that was uh, just bought in case you don't know what brand new means. And then even then, I don't know, something's going to fucking happen, you know? I don't know. I'm soured on the whole fucking thing. And I put my goddamn life savings into downstairs and I don't think I'm ever leaving. That's it. 
I'm fucking done. All I need is a friend with a pool, and I'm good. <laughs> it's fucking dust. They're putting the floors in downstairs, which is fucking exciting and dusty all at the same time. So anyways, um, this is the Monday Morning Podcast. My name is uh, William Burr, I'm being very official this week. And uh, yeah, I didn't do shit this week. Um, oh, for those of you, for those of you who are, were on the internet this week, and you might have saw, uh, we finally announced the show that I've been telling you that I've been writing on. Um, I actually sold an animated show to Netflix, a cartoon, as I like to call them. Everybody calls it, it's an animated show. It's animation. It's a cartoon. I sold a cartoon to Netflix. Uh, they greenlit six episodes. So this is a real thing. This is coming out. It's coming out. Um, uh, the name of the show is called F is for Family, and it's about a family in 1974. All right. It's basically I'm animating my childhood stories, the people that I kind of grew up with. Uh, nobody's um, in particular, just sort of the way shit was back then. And, uh, I'm working with a bunch of great people who all kind of grew up in that era too. We all kind of had the same moms and dads and friends and neighbors and all that type of shit. So, uh, it's not going to lie to you. It's the most work I've ever done in this business, but also it has been the most fun of anything that I've ever done. And I can't wait for you guys to see it. Unfortunately, because it is animation, it's not going to be out until a year from December, which coincidentally enough, I think is when they're going to finish the bottom of my house. So it's all going to come together for me next year, next year in 2015, December. Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. Right down Santa Claus Lane. Billy's basement is fucking finished and he's got a show. Please fucking watch it. Please fucking watch it. So I make money. Do boop do boop do boop boo And then I'll have to buy a roof. All right. Um, so that's coming out. Yeah. A year from this <laughs> December is when it's coming out. I don't know why they announce it as soon as they do. But uh, we got a great cast. We got Laura Dern's going to play my wife. Justin Long is playing my son. Uh, David Keckner is playing my boss. And uh, they're all absolutely fucking hilarious. And we got a bunch of other people um, doing voices on there. And uh, like I said, it's the most fun I've, I've – other than doing stand-up, it's the most fun I've had. I can't wait for you guys to see it because I think it's going to be pretty fucking – it's pretty over the top, put it that way. Um, and I know what you're thinking. Well, Bill, how did you come up with an idea like that? Well, you know what? I used to tell my childhood stories on stage and only twisted people would laugh and the rest of the crowd would be like, oh, that's sad. So I was walking my dog one day trying to think, how the fuck can I do these things where people will, uh, you know, fucking loosen up a little bit. I was like, all right, I'll animate it. I'll do a cartoon. Those aren't real people. They have three fucking fingers. On each hand. And then nobody can get mad. Nobody can get offended. And that's been the most fun about doing this. As we've been writing this thing, at no point have I got one network note saying, well, what is it? What are we we're promoting drug use? That's violence against women. This is, you know, what, what's PETA going to say? No, no, nothing. Because it's, it's cartoon people. It doesn't fucking count. Um, so there you go. So I got that coming out. I know it's a long ways off, but I'm excited about it. So I'll be talking to you. Uh, we've re recorded, uh, you know, some episodes at this point. You know, we're about halfway done. And um, I can't, I, 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 you know, I've just been having the time of my life doing it. So <clears throat> that's what I've been doing. All right. And with that, let me read a little bit of advertising here. Let's pay for the fucking basements here. Um, all right. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, the fucking throat. I know it's annoying. All right. DraftKings, everybody. Lis listeners are winning huge cash, prize cash prizes every week at DraftKings.com, America's favorite one-week fantasy football site. One-week fantasy means no season-long commitments. Play whenever you want. Got an injured player, not a problem at DraftKings, where it's like a new season every week. So you're never stuck with the same players. Rex Ryan ought to play this, huh? Poor bastard. Uh, pick your team in minutes, and you could be on your way to winning instant cash. Last year, one player turned 11 bucks into four grand. Another one, 100 grand, his first time ever playing. And another one, a million bucks in one day, just playing fantasy football. Hurry and get free, hurry and get free entry into the $100,000 fantasy football contest this weekend, where first place takes home 10 grand. Call to action. 
Head over to DraftKings now and enter the promo code DEFENSE to play for free. DraftKings.com. Bigger events, bigger winnings, bigger millionaires. Enter DEFENSE for free entry now. Now at DraftKings.com. DraftKings.com. That man right there. DraftKings.com. <clears throat> Dollar Shave Club, everybody. Guys, DollarShaveClub.com. I've been talking about them for years. They deliver great razors. For a few bucks a month, if you're not a member, what's your hold up? What are you waiting for? What do you like, old ladies? You want to go down to the CVS and stand behind them, huh? Smelling that creeping death? Or do you want fresh racers <laughs> delivered to your door every week, once a month? Look, think they'll have a bunch of fees? Hit you with a bunch of fees if that's what's worrying you? Don't worry. DollarShaveClub.com has no fees. You just pay for raises, the raises that they ship you, and that's it. Get their four-blade razor and four replacement blades sent to your door each month for six bucks, including shipping. You don't want to get locked into a monthly commitment. We understand. DollarShaveClub.com doesn't have any contracts. It's all under the table, dude. And if you decide you don't want razors for a month or two, they won't send any, and you don't pay a dime. They're basically running their business the way they should be. Don't know if you'll like their products. I already told you their stuff is amazing. But if you don't, if you don't agree, DollarShaveClub.com will refund your money. No questions asked. Um, stop with the excuses unless you're some idiot who likes wasting money. Go sign up at DollarShaveClub.com slash Burr right now. I'm telling you it's great. That's DollarShaveClub.com slash Burr. Where was that when I was a child? <clears throat> Not a child. When I was first starting to... To shave. You know how much money I've fucking blown on razors? I don't, I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know. It's too scary. All right. All right. NFL football talk. So all the ladies just, you know, walk away from the podcast at this point. All right. Go make some goddamn pumpkin pie. You know, go put on an apron and some horseshoes and walk around the kitchen like you used to when relationships worked. Okay? Before you were bitch moaning and complaining at me during the football, both from the kitchen and on my television set. Oh, Jesus, Bill. Jesus. What's wrong with you? All right. <clears throat> let's talk about um, let's talk about my New England Patriots. Huh? How'd you like that, Chicago? Huh? That was for Super Bowl twenty. <laughs> I hate when people do that, when they think that you can get revenge for a playoff game. Playoffs? A playoff game during the regular season. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go out on a limb and say uh, that was just a bad game for Chicago. I'm not saying they would have won the game, but come on. That was fucking ri ridiculous. The, the, the end, the final like five minutes of the second quarter, there should have been no announcers. They should have just been playing Benny Hill music. Anytime the fucking Bears had the ball. You know, we scored 21 points in like four and a half minutes. It was, I, didn't even, I didn't even watch the second half. Put it that way. Put up a 50 spot on them. 5-0. And you know what? As much as I want to rub it in their face, who beat who in the Stanley Cup Finals? Who beat who in the Super Bowl? Exactly. There you go. There you go. So... No Chicago fan should feel sad. There's not one Chicago fan out there that should feel sad. You guys have had a lot of success. You had Michael Jordan, right? 85 Bears. The Bears is a little rough, you know, but you got the, the Blackhawks are making up for it. And all you Cub fans, I don't have, you guys, do you, you don't even care. You started caring when some fucking nerd wearing a Walkman touched a foul ball and you all piled on him like, like the fucking pussies you are. Chicago Cub fans. What about the other six guys standing around who also reached up for the ball? What's the matter? Were they out of your weight class? You wanted that guy with his little hat pulled down over his head? You fucking punks. I don't have any sympathy for Chicago Cubs fans because they don't even give a fuck. They've only given a fuck for like the last 10 years. But other than that, it's just been take your shirt off and let's have a keg party. Nobody cares. You're, they're almost like an honorary baseball team. Like, ah, eh, you know, just, just represent the fact that people like the game. You know, the White Sox fans, they care. They give a fuck. It's written all over their goddamn faces. 
You know, they still miss their old ballpark. They hate that new place. You see them coming in with their heads down going, look at this stupid ass fucking thing. You know, we had a classic fucking car and we traded it in on a Ford Taurus. What the fuck did we do? You know, so you can feel for those guys. They give a fuck. Chicago Cub fans do not give a shit. All right. So if you're a tourist, if you ever go to Chicago and you run into somebody, you know, and they got a passion for what they're doing, that's a White Sox fan. If you run into just some fucking jerk off, you know, sitting there wearing loafers with no socks, you know, and some silly fucking let's play two hat, that is a Cubs fan. And they are not to be respected. See what I did there, people? Not only did we just beat them, I just caused hopefully some arguments right now between people in Chicago. That right there was a terrorist act right here in the podcast. And you listened to it because you didn't do anything, because you didn't hit stop. You actually became a part of it. And now you're liable. What do you think about that? All right. um, I actually, you know, as, as well as the Patriots are playing and they look great. How the fuck are we number one in pass defense? I had no idea. I've been watching every game. Um, I would say, and we're like last in the run or some horseshit like that. So I, I actually think this next week when we play the Broncos, you know, if we win, um, decisively, then I'll actually believe in this team as far as their ability to possibly, uh, you know, go deep into the playoffs and maybe make a run at this thing. But I got to be honest with you. Who the fuck is good this year in the NFL? Who is like, like without a doubt, fucking good? Like, look at the fucking Seahawks. I don't know what the hell happened to them. They've won like four games this year. I don't even know how many games we're into at this fucking point. What are you, eight weeks in? Let me try to pull this shit up here. The standings. Um... Like, I would have thought the Steelers were going were gonna to lose. Who the fuck were they playing? I don't even remember. <laughs> I'm the worst. Why do I do this shit? Who the fuck are the Seahawks? Seattle Seahawks are 4-3. and three. You're telling me the Arizona Cardinals, 6-1, and one, like as a Patriots fan, I got to sit there and think if we make it to the Super Bowl, holy shit, we might play the Cardinals. Look out for those Lions. I'm not even buying the Eagles. I, I don't believe in their coach or their quarterback. I don't think I don't know that anybody's good. The Giants are three and four. I don't know. Look at the Raiders. Zero oh and seven. Broncos are six and one. I think they could actually. Uh, I don't know. I think we would we would have a tough time. Obviously with the Broncos, we'd have a tough time with the Colts. I don't get the Bengals. I don't get them. Everybody was talking about how they were fucking unbelievable, and then they came into Foxborough and got the living shit kicked out of them. It's Cincinnati. They're never going to win anything. You ever just look at a uniform, and you're just like, you're done. You're never going to win a Super Bowl. The Cincinnati Bengals. It's fucking over. They look like they're, remember that, that Broadway show, Cats? That's what they, if you put a helmets on those fucking dancers, to dream the impossible dream. You know, they could do that. <laughs> Why am I being a dick? You know why? Because I got I to gotta fucking blow through this podcast and I got to go to work. And I, I'm fucking, I'm, 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 I'm not in day job shape. I haven't had a day job since 1995. And I got to get up every morning, pack a fucking lunch like a jerk off. I'm just fucking with you guys with all your teams. Um, I actually feel, feel really bad for the Raiders, man. 0-7. Oh, what the fuck? I watched a little bit of that game yesterday. How about that Browns defense, huh? Their offense sucks. One guy goes down on the O-line, and all of a sudden, everybody rolls over. The fucking pocket's collapsing. I love how they're going, yeah, you know, it was a major injury. Really? So then everybody sucks on the offensive line? I don't understand that. But their defense looked phenomenal. But granted, they were playing their Raiders. Um, All right, let me just get, let me bail out of this. I obviously don't know shit about football this year, despite the fact I've watched almost every week. Uh Uh-oh, I see movement. Is that the lovely Nia? The lovely Nia. Da, da. Hey, what's – oh, I just get the wave? She's coming in. Um, anyways, oh, you know what I did yesterday? 
over the last two days because it's uh, it's Halloween. You know me, I, I get up for the holidays. I think it's very important to uh, start traditions around the holidays. You know what I mean? It reminds you of your childhood. You create new memories, right? So I made six loaves of pumpkin bread. <laughs> I've been handing them out to my friends like a fucking drug dealer, you know, because they're wrapped in foil. It just feels like you got a brick of weed, you know, riding around in my, my fucking... I'm riding around in a Prius with one of those uh, uh, Save the Earth grocery bags, the cloth ones filled with pumpkin bread, dropping it off to friends. Okay? If you can be any more effeminate and still be straight, if you can top that, I want to know what it is. That's your homework this week. I want you guys to send me in emails that you, you feel that there's something beyond driving a Prius with a cloth grocery bag filled up with pumpkin bread that you made, dropping it off to friends. And I want you to find something that's more effeminate than that as a straight guy. And don't just tag on to what I just said and add, like, skipping. You know what? I'm going to fucking just go hack up whatever the fuck is in my mind. Hang on a second. Hang on. Well, let me just hit pause here. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Jesus Christ, I should have done that 20 minutes ago. I can't imagine how many listeners I've lost. Um, all right. What am I talking about? Oh, yeah, making the pumpkin bread. Dude, I got it down now. You make six loaves of pumpkin bread, you can do that shit in your sleep. I found this giant fucking whisk that we got um, as a wedding gift. You know, uh, my wife registered it. You know, you know, they always register all that, that shit that you think as a guy you think is dumb. Like, why do we need all this, you know? Why don't we register at the flat screen TV store? We don't do that. Yeah. You register it like wicks and sticks, you know, get a bunch of fucking candles, you know, glasses and plates and all of that shit. And uh, then all of a sudden it arrives and you're like, ah, Jesus Christ, we got to cut all this shit up. And the next thing you know, you got a stocked fucking kitchen. And you're looking at that big, dumb, stupid fucking whisk. Going, what, well, look at the size. I want to make it. I'll fucking uh, make some pancakes for the green giant. What, what, what do I need a, a whisk this big for? I'll tell you when you need it. When you're making six loaves of pumpkin bread. And you're standing on a fucking chair. Just stirring that. Stirring that shit. I got to admit, I fucking love bacon. It's just, it's like controlled, like playing in like a mud puddle. It's like you're being a little kid again. And I got to tell you, it's delicious. And I ate a bunch of it. And, uh. I'm not liking the shape I'm in right now. I'm fucking Billy Fat again right now. It's fucking driving me nuts. And uh, I got to start working out again. And someone told me the other day, what are you talking about? You look good. You look good. It's like, no, I don't. No, I don't. I have a shirt on. Most people look good when you put clothes on them. You know, when, you, when, you're, when you're hiding the mistakes. And that's basically how you stay in shape. You know, every night before you go to bed, you take your shirt off and you look at it. You look at the damage that you created in the mirror. And you do every sort of bend you can possibly bend to the side, bend to the other side, right? Stand to the side. You know, bend over at the waist and you just see that fucking spare tire. Just grab a whole fucking handful of it. Look at you, you fucking piece of shit. Huh? How about a little willpower? That first half was bullshit. We're going to get out there in the third quarter. You can fucking psych yourself up. You psych yourself up. It's all about the next goddamn day when you wake up in the morning. That's like you're coming out of the locker room at halftime. All right? And what are we going to do? Are we going to make some halftime adjustments? Or are we going to go right back to the Frosted Flakes? Huh? What are you going to do? Are you going to make some red velvet pancakes, you tub of shit? Huh? Or are you going to get some grape nuts and have a banana? You're going to make some oatmeal. That's what you need to do. You got to get the fucking oatmeal. What is that shit that I'm telling you, dude? It's, it's, it's a, it's, I, I used to never believe that food is a drug. It's 100% a drug. And you got to fucking, when you start eating badly, you got to force yourself to just fucking eat a salad. And it just fucking stops those cravings like dead in the track. It's a fucking, it's a stiff arm right to the sugar salt bullshit. You know, same thing with working out. I didn't work out for like at least like 10 days and I kept sitting on the couch as I'm watching sports going, Bill, just fucking drop the floor and just give, you know, bang out a hundred pushups. And I just, I, I'll do it tomorrow. I don't feel like it. Uh, you don't because you, I've been eating like shit. I'm eating pumpkin bread. I got that shit in my body and it's, it's fucking eating away at my brain. 
And as, as, as the smart part of me is going, go on, Bill, get up. Go for a walk, you pasty tub of shit, right? The pumpkin, the pumpkin bread's getting stronger. It's in there. This guy, I don't listen to him. Sit on the couch. Come on, you earned it. You've been working hard, right? So yesterday, I finally got off the couch. And my body's screaming, no, I don't want to die, I don't want to die, I don't want to. And I just forced myself. And within five, six of them, you know, you get that, you start getting that rush that you're working out. You know, you stand up after, what, are they, banging out a set of 25, 35 or whatever, right? You get up and all of a sudden you feel good. You start strutting around, you know? First down, right? Like you just made a nice fucking catch on third down, saving the drive. You drop down, you do another 35. You start thinking, dude, I'm going to get fucking shredded. Huh? I'm going to wear that Mark Wahlberg fucking underwear walking around all shredded. Right? You start thinking shit like that. Just after two sets. But if you didn't override that fucking McDonald's in your brain and you just sat there, you know what you're going to do? You're going to add another fucking layer of fat. And you're going to go into the bathroom at night hanging your head when you brush your teeth. Because, you know, you don't want to look at it. Now you got a T-shirt on. You can see it coming through your fucking T-shirt. You can't hide that shit, right? That big pile of mush clinging to your fucking rib cage. Awful. Looking like a fucking, I don't know what. I get into a certain level of shape. I just feel like I should be tied to the wrists, hanging from a tree, and be used as a pinata. <laughs> oh, it's disgusting. I was just thinking that you fucking beat me and candy comes out of my ass because I've been eating so bad. I'm sorry. Whatever. What do you want from me? So now I'm back on the stick. So, you know, all I did was I did 100 push-ups, and uh, I woke up today thinking about doing pull-ups. Had I not done that, I'd be fucking out there eating pumpkin bread. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to eat another slice of it. Oh, and I'm putting butter on it. All right? But I, you just got you know, you just got to refuse to get past a certain point. You have to have a fucking line in the sand. A line in the butter where you're just like, I'm not going past this. I'm not going past this shit. So, <clears throat> you know, whatever. I'm talking about trying to stay in shape, which obviously now I can effortlessly segue into the Ebola panic. All right. I'm sitting there watching 60 Minutes. Okay. And I got all these famous people telling me that they're tired of me beating women. All these women that I'm not beating. All right. I'm watching the World Series. I'm being reminded that people lose people to cancer every day, which is which is always nice. You know, when you're watching the national pastime, take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. I just lost my mother to throat cancer. Boo hoo 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 hoo. I mean, what the what the fuck are you doing? I don't want to see that during the fucking game. Can we just have like the cancer channel, or, like the disease channel? You know, and every once in a while I'll fucking click over there and I'll write a, you know, send in five bucks or whatever the fuck I got to do. Do you really have to interrupt it? Am I out of my mind that I think it's unbelievably fucking selfish to do that to people? What, what, are they, what are the fuck are they going to do next? You going to crash some little boy's birthday party? Happy birthday to no more. No more she fell face first into a birthday cake. Lady, he's five years old. <laughs> hey, just in case you haven't heard, everybody, it's not okay to hit a woman. Just in case you're a little confused, uh, cocaine is bad for you. Uh, just to let you know, uh, when somebody dies of cancer, there's people that love them and they miss the person afterwards and it's very painful. Just thought we would remind you that while you're trying to watch the Kansas City Royals and the San Francisco Giants. So then, you know, as if all of that shit, this is bread and circus time. This is mouth breeder time. And you're coming in here bringing up the horrors of the world. Right? So I'm watching uh, the 4 o'clock game and all they keep doing on CBS is they keep hyping on 60 Minutes that they're going to be talking about three or four nurses Three of which are guys, right? Which means the three ladies that were going to be nurses are now doctors, which as far as I can tell is three out of four nurses are now men 
And three out of four doctors are now women, and they're still bitching. All right? And don't even tell me my math is off on that, because where the fuck were all the female nurses? They're nowhere to be found. Because they bitch, moaned, and complained to get themselves to hold the scalpel now. Now, what the fuck are we doing? We're, we're walking around changing bedpans, and you're fucking coming on my football to tell me not to hit you? Uh, you want to take a bedpan right across your back like wrestling with a steel chair, taking all the doctor jobs. You women got a lot of nerve. Um, anyways, so what do they do? They start fucking hyping. Um, they start hyping that they're going to talk to these four people that were near an Ebola patient who didn't catch Ebola and how fucking scared they are. You know what's funny? The people who actually caught Ebola, how many have even died? You know? You know what Ebola is? Ebola is the Cincinnati Bengals of diseases. <laughs> they started fucking strong. Everybody thought they were a contender. Right? They knocked the ice bucket challenge right off the map. Everybody was talking about fucking ALS, ice bucket challenge, and in comes Ebola, right? Like if it was a nightclub. Ebola comes walking in a little hotter. Shoes a little hoarier, right? And everybody starts looking over at that bitch walking into the fucking club. And then ALS is over there with the ice bucket going, wait a minute, I'm doing the wet t-shirt thing over here. You guys don't like this anymore? <clears throat> Sorry, ALS, there's a better looking whore on the pole. So now everybody's over here looking at this fucking Ebola shit. We're going to be fine, everybody. This is the deal. Let's just say... Let's just say a couple hundred thousand people die of Ebola. All right? You know, we, we have like over 300 million people in this country. Okay? So the way I look at it, it's like you got a giant football team here. Ebola takes out 200,000 people. That's like when you make your final cuts in the preseason. Now we got, we're, we're a little more streamlined. All right? Who's kidding who, dude? If you get Ebola, you, you, you're weak. You're a weak person. Okay? You don't have the intestinal fortitude. You don't have the mental toughness, okay, to fucking survive in a world of diseases, okay? And when you get Ebola, why don't you have the fucking decency to not go to the fucking airport, all right? Just walk down the street into the woods and just bleed out by yourself like a gentleman. Why, why can't you do that? Is, is there a reason for that? That's my question. I'm going to take college here in 20 minutes. Um, <clears throat> how far into this am I? This fucking absolute horse shit. Uh, all right. What have I talked about? Oh, man. What's it? I've been watching a little bit of hockey. This is such a tough year to try and keep up with everything. I've been really watching the World Series, though. Um, I, I missed most of game four. I think I did. Uh, I was watching something else. I forget what, but... Uh, Jesus, Kansas City came back. They lost the first one. For those of you not watching, they came back. They won game two and three. They're up two games to one. Up two games to one, right? And then they go out to, you know, they're already, actually, they won the first game in San Francisco. And then uh, I was hoping that they were going to win either one game uh, four or five, and they didn't. They lost them both. It was like the Giants. I don't know if there's a way to make a halftime adjustment, but that's what it looks like the Giants did. I just think that they ran into some tough pitching and uh, – so who knows? Who knows? But um, I don't have any sort of feeling on this series. Like, I don't feel like if KC wins game six that they're going to win game seven. I hope they do. I like the Royals. I also really like the Giants, too. So I'm not being a dick to people in San Francisco. It's just, you know, I just saw the Giants win 2010, 2012. Um, and it was great to see that. Um, but I'd like to, you know, I'd like to see KC get one. However, if the Giants win... Um, that's three World Series in the 2000s, and they would join the Boston Red Sox. We won 04, 07, and uh, 2013. Um, because basically somebody is going to be the Yankees of this uh, century. Someone's going to be the one who won the most fucking, uh, you know, team of the century, basically. How many, how many World Series, how many, how many, how many World Series do you think it's going to take to be the... Uh, the team of this century, because now that you got 30 fucking teams, what's crazy is if Kansas City wins this year, the fact that it took them 29 years, they're actually 
on average, mathematically, you know, you got a one in 30 chance of winning now that they would be, uh, that for them to win one in 29 years, they actually came in a year early. Is my math fucked up on that? I'm sure it is. I'm not the smartest guy out there, especially when it comes to the fucking arithmetic there. Um, I'm actually thinking if you won, if you won 12, maybe, if you won 12, I would think that you'd get it at this point with 30 fucking teams. That's winning better than one a decade. Um, so like right now, the Red Sox are ahead of the curve. I can't believe I even get to say that after all the shit they went through is they've won three. So they're actually good through the 2020s. And I think we're going to get another one before then. Um, I think the Yankees are, uh, I don't know. I think they're, they're all, all of those teams, the Celtics, the Yankees, the Canadians, all of those teams that won like fucking nine zillion titles when there was like fucking 15 teams in the league of 10 teams in the league. Uh, you know, that's over. Like back in the day when the Yankees used to win titles, do you know when, when you won your division, that was winning the pennant? They had so few teams that there wasn't another division you had to play. Forget about two rounds of fucking baseball, best four out of seven to get to the final thing. Now, I'm not, you know, fucking with the Yankees' legacy because it's the most legit thing there is considering Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Joe DiMaggio, and Mickey Mantle. No one's ever going to have a fucking run of players like that again. You're lucky if you go back-to-back um, with two unbelievable players. Forget about four in a row. Um but nobody's going to win at a clip like that again. Like, I don't see anybody ever catching the Yankees. Like, how bad the Yankees would have to nosedive. And they're spending, like, you know, $200 million a year. I think they've, they've lowered their, their yearly average at this point. But generally speaking, they send, spend roughly $200 million bucks a year. If you do that year after year after year, uh, you know, you're going to win a couple here, a couple there, and you're going to stay out front. Because I, I think the closest... That is to them is I think the Cardinals and they got like 11, 10 or 11. I can't remember what. And that puts them like a good 16, 16 behind. It's over. No one's going to catch them. No one's going to catch the, uh, the Canadians. Um, both of them are just two out and far in front. But then with basketball, like I think the Lakers are going to overtake the Celtics just because of, uh, people would rather play in LA like Boston and LA are, are equally racist. Um, and a lot of people don't think that just because for some reason we get all the attention, you know, despite the fact that they have fucking riots out here and their police are constantly fucking murdering people. Um, I would say, yeah. So then it just comes down to better weather. Um, and celebrity pussy. I mean, right there. And, you know, yeah, it's basically, what do you want to do? You want to play in the racist town with the bad weather and uh, the potato faces? Or do you want to come out here with the uh, plastic surgery ass and the great weather with the racism? I mean, it's a no fucking brainer. They're going to come out here. Um, so, I don't know, unless we go on some sort of a fucking run. That's the only real race that there is. And for those of you who don't keep up on it, the Celtics have 17 and the Lakers have 15 plus a BAA championship that they have to count as an NBA championship for some fucking reason. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand how I've said it before. I don't understand how the fuck you can win an NBA championship before the NBA exists. It's unbelievable, but you know, it's LA. That's what you do. I'm a director. I got 16 championships. All right. Uh, let's, let's read a little bit of advertising here. Oh, by the way. Oh, by the way, if, um, let me get this out of the way here. If you would like to buy my, uh, my stand-up comedy album, and you do not live in the continental United States. Um, my record is available for international orders at thirdmanrecords.com. Thirdmanrecords.com. T-H-I-R-D. Manrecords.com. Uh, you can order it there. And um, reminders for listeners of the podcast, the email to ask me questions is bill at the mmpodcast.com. Bill at the mm podcast.com. <clears throat> All right. Let's get into uh let's get into uh some questions here for the week. Um all right. Shaving in the steam room. 
All right, what do we got here? Bill, you like steams. After my workout, I like to take a steam. What I find is people coming in and shaving in the steam room. What the fuck? Dude, people are just, they're fucking animals, man. Fucking animals. There's a sign outside, no shaving, but it must be for someone else. You're a quick-witted guy. What backhanded response can I give these assholes when they come in and start shaving? Am I the most negative guy ever that I took your, you're a quick-witted guy as an insult? Hey, Bill, you're a quick-witted guy. Why don't you write me a fucking comeback? What am I on the writing staff of your life here, sir? Um, what would you say? I would sit there in the steam and be like, buddy, there's no shaving in here. That's disgusting. We all have to use it. What's wrong with you? You fucking animal. Oh, look who's here. Look who's here, everybody. It's the lovely Nia making a parents for the first time in a while. People thought you dumped me. Get over here. I only have one microphone. Don't touch the fucking mixer. What are you doing? Oh, Jesus. I'm, I'm in the other room listening to you screaming like a moron about God knows what. What are you yelling about? I- Again? <laughs> Nia, this, this podcast is... Uh, it's an important thing. I got to bring the energy. I got to bring the laughs. I know. It's literally Monday morning. And you're like, oh, I'm putting butter on it. You're fucking screaming about <laughs> pumpkin bread. It's nine in the morning. What is the matter with you? Seriously. Uh, and when know. someone calls to ask you for a, 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 a nice quip or something to say to somebody, you get an attitude about it. What's the matter with you? I don't know. Look, at, look how it's written. Look how it's written. Tell me I'm wrong there. Somebody was shaving in the steam room. How gross is that? That's disgusting. <laughs> Absolutely fucking disgusting. They should literally just put a collar around that guy and stick him in a fucking cage. Take him down to the pound. Yeah, I mean, he can either just go straight up to him like you said. Hey, buddy, there's no shaving in here. That sounds like exactly what we would say. You would definitely say, hey, buddy, in that really fucking tense way. <laughs> no, I would. Or you could, like, you, you know, know what he should tell do? on them to the uh, no. place and get them banned or you something. You know what? You, you stand up. We hear, we're, we're getting reports that you're, you're shaving in the steam room. And, sir, well, you've been warned several times about this. We're going to have to ask you to leave. Can I have your, your locker room key, please? No, the, the guy initially denies it. Oh, I wasn't shaving in there. And then the guy, like, gently reaches out and touches the side of his face. Come on. <laughs> we both we, know. <laughs> we both know there's no way your face is going to be that smooth unless you're shaving. You know what the guy, the guy should do is just stand up and start peeing on his leg. No, this is what you do. You say. What? Yeah, no, you say, sir, there's no shaving in here. And if he has an attitude, then you pee on his leg. And then you both get kicked out. And it's just, then you make the news. Go, go, go. Like that TMZ. A man was shaving. I wasn't going to make the show. Let me get a tighter shirt. The ma- this man was shaving in the steam room with this other guy. <laughs> he got so many pees on his leg. No way. No way. That, that didn't happen. That's my TMZ impression. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that you watch that stupid fucking show with all those goddamn geeks standing I around. I don't watch it on a regular basis, but uh, I do. Uh, I, I watch it from time to time to get caught up on the on the celebrity tea. I have never seen, however long it seems like it's an hour long, an hour long of nothing. Yeah. Just watching people coming out of restaurants. Mm-hmm. You know. Hey, Sean Penn, what do you think about Ebola? And he's just like, what? (laughs) I just had some muscles. (laughs) Oh, Cleo. Cleo wants to be on the podcast, too. All right, all right, all right, all right. It was going off the rails. It's going off the rails here. Get down, get down. Come on, get down. The original cock block. Anytime we hug, the dog comes over like, I want to be a part of it. (laughs) Go lie down, mommy. Go lie down. Get over there. Get over there, stupid. Don't call the dog stupid. Oh, that dog. I fucking love that dog. You don't even understand. All right? I don't understand. Yeah, you don't no, understand. I think I do understand. The way you throw yourself on top of her and go, oh, Cleo, or as loud as possible. It's one of my favorite things to do. You can't stop doing it. I you know. You do it constantly throughout the day. You do it like 10 times a day. I'm not exaggerating. I'm, I'm not going to defend myself. It's a, I, how do you not go over and hug your dog? That's what I do. I always go, I, she, she sees me coming over. She lays down her side, and I just grab her, and I squeeze her, and I scream, Oh, Cleo! Yeah, you get her all in a <laughs> fucking state. You know, and who takes her for a hike every fucking day? 
You me do. yeah you do but you also like literally you walk into the room and she's like up on her feet and she's like ah, 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 like you you're giving the dog your energy your manic energy <laughs> that's true i know i'm a fucking psycho what do you want from me but you know what i don't shave in the steam room so what, what would i say to this guy i would say uh i'd be like buddy there's no shaving in here that's fucking gross yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah, what's wrong with you little stupid whiskers are going to be there on the floor? You fucking animal. Dude, I, I swear to God, I swear to God. The, the, the fucking animals that go into steam rooms. Fucking animals. Fucking guy like cleaning the, his toenails or his dead skin off of his feet, just sitting there scrubbing it. Yeah. Yeah, no. You know something? I only think that that's 10% of people that go into steam rooms. I think the rest of us, we need to speak up. We're just sitting there silently and they're not saying anything. Just, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? That's gross. Mm-hmm. Sitting there yelling at somebody, you both got your dicks out. Ah, I'll tell you another thing. Things <laughs> flapping around. All right. Remaining positive. Hey there, Billy boy. I'm a 23-year-old recent, recent college graduate who's dealing with a bit of depression. Having never dated, finding it hard. Did I write this? Having never dated... Finding it hard to get a job and having no actual goal in life, I'm finding it hard to keep motivated to do anything. I normally eat well and go to the gym, but that's the only healthy habit I have. I want to be enjoying my 20s, but because I've accomplished nothing, not even having formed any relationship with any girl, it's been hard to smile and remain positive. Do you get into these sorts of funks, and what advice would you have to get out of it? Any advice from you or the lovely Nia? Would honestly make a major impact on my life. No pressure. Yeah, buddy. Jesus. Um, yeah, I literally could have written that at 23 years old. I was basically in the uh, essentially the same boat. Um, had no fucking. I was still living at home. Had no girlfriend. I commuted all the way through college. I didn't have any college friends. Never went to any of those parties or any of that type of shit. Um, and I was actually flailing, wondering what the fuck I was going to do with my life. I tried sales. I worked in warehousing. I uh, had a job at a dental office, and none of it was making me excited about going to work. And I started thinking, like, oh, fuck, am I going to be that guy? That guy that just does a fucking job that he hates. And um, I don't know. I just started every day, I don't know, just trying to think what I wanted. What did I want? And um, don't look at it with judgment. Or think that something's impossible. Like whatever you want to do to be sitting there thinking like, oh, I can't do that. I could never do it. You can't. You can't. I am an absolute moron. And if I can make something happen, you definitely can. I, I, would, <laughs> I would say that. I don't like how you laugh when I said I'm a moron. You are a moron. But I think you just gave really, really perfect advice. That's great advice. You got to figure out, yeah, what is it that you really, really enjoy doing? And maybe there's a way to actually make a living at it. Like Bill. Yeah, this is what you just start doing it. You just start fucking doing it, and then eventually it turns into your job. And all you do is just – I think what most people do is, like, say they're thinking, like, I don't know, pick a job that's fucking uh, – you're like, oh, I can never do that. I'll just keep it in entertainment. Say you wanted to um, get into, like, um, broadcasting, I guess, announcing games. And you start thinking like, oh, my God, I want to announce NFL games. How the fuck do I get there? So you start, you know, I would think you'd start doing high school games, Little League games. I would do anything. I would just, if no one was hiring me, I would just show up at Little League games with a fucking sport coat on and set up a table. And I would just start doing it. I would go down to pick up basketball games that's, I'd, not, that's not creepy at all and i would just Grown start man doing just showing up at the little kids game like here i am <laughs> i know because now because there's pedophiles there's always been pedophiles what am i and here i am i'm gonna what start molesting a kid as everyone's sitting there i would just start doing the game like it was a major league baseball game the parents would love it you could go down to like the uh the basketball courts i would just anything just to just to be doing it that's like your open mics i'm not getting paid i'm learning how to do this shit and then <clears throat> i don't know Start taking some classes at a broadcasting school. You just, every part of your day becomes announcing, you know? Right. I, when I had day jobs, I used to sit there doing the job, and I would be, any, I, any funny fucking idea I had, I would just write it down, and, um, and then I would go try it out somewhere, and 
I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it and do, you just you just start marching towards it and you don't look at like well hey I just fuck I'm I'm doing high school games I'll never get to the NFL like most people don't get there because they want it in a week dude that fucking helicopters are gonna fly into the fucking house around here they're crazy I don't know if you guys could just hear that shit um, they uh, yeah you just every single day you just you just I don't know. Look at this stupid ass podcast. I just kept doing it every Monday, and all of a sudden, you know, I got a I'm bunch curious, of listeners. I'm curious about because I'm trying to, you know, I'm always trying to like read between the lines. And he goes, "I normally eat well and go to the gym, but that's the only quote unquote healthy habit I have." What does that mean? Oh, well, I don't want to start. Why that got? I'm just, I'm just curious as why that got thrown in there because I don't know if that means that there's things that he's doing that he is not healthy because the rest of it doesn't really i don't know i normally eat well and go to the gym that's the only healthy habit i have like it's or it's like the only thing like habit i have it's just like working out and going to the gym but i don't have any other like things but like just the healthy in quotes is uh it concerns me a little bit. well i think he's really hard on himself oh. so he's got to lighten up on himself so even yeah. when he's doing something sure. even when he's doing something positive he still puts it in quotes he won't give himself credit for that oh. it sounds like you maybe you had some negative parents who uh told you the world was a lot more difficult than it is i would uh i'd also work on like just paying attention to the thoughts in your head that's how because i was never clinically depressed but i was definitely i had definitely bouts of depression and funks and that type of thing i felt like shit yesterday when i was watching the game and i did uh a uh, hundred push-ups and you know three sets Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not gonna actually like actually drop down. <laughs> I would have had a heart attack. In a row, no, yeah. no, I did. I did <laughs> set of three, and I got to 100, 105 actually. Sets of 35. All right, you fucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I immediately felt better. Right. I immediately felt better. So. And also, you're 23 years old. You have a long, long time to figure out what it is that you want to do for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? And it's probably gonna change several times. So maybe you just graduated college and you're like, oh, I majored in business. I don't want to get into business. I really want to, yeah, be a veterinarian or something like that. And I think that Bill's right. You should really. Then I would do it. I would immediately start picking up roadkill off of the side of the road. <laughs> and I'd try to see if I could bring it back to life. Try reviving it. Try reviving that uh, dead cat on the freeway. No, no. Just, yeah. You're fine. You're 23. You got your whole life ahead of you. You know what could be worse, dude? You could be in a relationship and you fucking knocked her up and now you're tied to her for the rest of your fucking life. And then you got to go get a job at, at some place you don't want to work at. So the fact that you don't have anything going on in your life is fucking awesome. There's nothing holding you back. You can just now you can you actually get to decide. You know how many people would want to be in your fucking position? 23, no girlfriend, you know, no fucking mortgage, no bullshit, none of that stuff. It's just you. Dude. Fucking, you know, figure out what you want to do and go after it. And uh, tell that negative thought you had to go fuck yourself. There you go. That was like a, a Dr. Phil episode. There you go. That solves all your problems. <laughs> when we come back, I yell at more men. You work at a, you, yeah, just work on yourself. The rest, will, the rest will come together. Don't worry about the girl part yet. Just get, get your own shit together. I already said that. Why did you feel like you? You keep trying I'm to say. You what keep you trying. Said. No, you keep trying to say. Like you keep trying to be the person who says the last thing. This is my podcast. So then, I wrap the fuck it up. My ear. I wrap you it up. You wanted me to come in here. You wanted me to come in here. You know I you did. did. So stop giving me shit. Read the next question. All right. Artificial intelligence, also known as Bill Burr. <laughs> oh Jesus! Artificial <laughs> intelligence, and it's if, if as long as there's intelligence in there, I'll take it. And it's impact on humanity. <clears throat> Dill, dear Bill Boo Baggins, what are your thoughts on Tesla founder Elon Musk's warnings on artificial intelligence? I just love the fact that you think that I actually read it. He said that through recursive self-improvement, simple tasks like preventing spam could lead to an AI determining humans are the problem. Is this like a sci-fi script? <laughs> I know. Okay, yeah, I get it. Um, I'm totally interested, but I don't know what's going on here. Recursive self-improvement means it could reason mm -hmm. with itself. Oh, this is uh, uh, like when you, you make a computer that, that like has emotions like a human being. Well, no, it's like like he's talking about we're trying to get rid of spam and email and stuff. But whatever program is like, wait, there's a human being behind the spam. There's a, there's a human being behind the um, Nigerian 
prince scheme or the oh my god friend i'm trapped in denmark and i've had my passport and all my money like taken from me and i don't think that is i think he's talking ai look simple tasks like preventing spam could lead to ai artificial intelligence Uh as a computer yeah it's a robot determining humans are the problem yeah okay so So how is there a guy in nigeria Recursive self-improvement. It's saying like it's realizing that human beings are behind the spam in your email. Like there's someone. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, oh boy. It's going to be a long one. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Recursive self-improvement means it could reason with itself and incrementally improve to overcome obstacles that prevent it from fulfilling its objectives. I listened to previous podcasts and you've mentioned – you think there would be a backdoor built into any AI machine robots by the powers that be. However, using the recursive self-improvement that Elon mentioned, an AI could eventually reason with itself that a backdoor preventing it from fulfilling its mandate must be ignored or overcome. Mm. Elon Musk is very intelligent, having found, founded PayPal, SpaceX, and Tesla, as well as playing a key role in Solar City. So I don't think... His concerns should be taken lightly. Here's a book that delves into the subject in more detail because I know you're a deep thinker. <laughs> See what I'm saying? They're, they're all giving me shit. Oh, that's funny. Our final invention, artificial intelligence and the end of the human era. Thanks for your, uh, for your fucking opinion. Um, Is this some like sort of like 1984 type shit? Like, you know. No, 1984 was humans on humans. Oh, okay. We'll see. They're just That's already going on. Problems. That's already going on where someone who was our ally yesterday is now the enemy and then the enemy is now the ally and oh, vice okay. versa and all that type of shit. So this is basically like the machines are getting so smart that they're going to eventually like take over. Yeah. Here's the thing about machines, Nia. They don't have legs. The robots might. Maybe that's his whole point. Like the robots. The robots I'm afraid of, but just like a computer. <laughs> right. It's like you don't have legs and you have an, umbil- an umbilical cord plugged into that fucking wall over there. And I will snip that fucker and I will dump water on you. And that's the end of you. Dump water on you. Yeah. Go but dump I- water on your computer. See what happens. But aren't they talking about making robots that will be able to like surpass all of that shit? And that's the scary part about it. It's like you don't want to give them too much intelligence because like he was saying, they'll learn that like, hey, wait. I've got this whole backdoor thing and fuck that backdoor um, yeah, well, because they're going to evolve beyond that. Here's the thing. What people don't like understand. Her. Did you ever see that movie Her with uh, Joaquin Phoenix? There was too much red. <laughs> <laughs> it was just too much red. He was the only one really that wore red. But anyway, go on. Anyways, this is what I feel. People are act- acting like this, just some nerdy scientist. <laughs> I'm going to make this artificial intelligence bullshit. It isn't. It's rich people. And rich people at the top want to phase out us. They're sick of us. Like we are an inconvenience to them with our complaints and our needs. They want us to shut the fuck up. They want us to all to be making fucking slippers for them for fucking 50 cents a month. They want to have all the cars. They want. Like, it's like I went, when I went to the farmer's market mm-hmm. yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. To add to my effeminate weekend of pumpkin bread and driving a Prius. Uh, speaking of which, you need to store your strawberries more correctly because they're just sitting out on the counter and they're going to go bad. You know why? You know why I left them out there? Why? Because why did you leave your strawberries out on the counter? Because they're not organic. I went to a farmer's market and they actually just have regular... You have to ask them, is this organic? And they'll be like, well, you know, our farmers, blah, 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 blah. They can't even handle 200 people, the grocery stores, can't handle 200 fucking people walking into a parking lot to buy some goddamn eggs. They even have to get that money. Like, they just, they don't, they, they, want, they want it all. The people so at the top... I, so can I have those strawberries if you're not going to eat them? See, did you, hear, did you hear that back and forth? <laughs> this is why we deserve to get fucking taken over. Right here, because you can't keep people on. You just give a fuck about the strawberries. I'm talking about the overall picture, man. I don't care if the strawberries are organic or not. That's not my cause right now. I'm just, I like strawberries. So I'm trying to stay on topic with this. Yes. Yeah. Let's stay on. Can you come near the mic, please? So basically, what is what is this person asking you? So he's asking me if I'm worried about artificial intelligence. I actually think that there's human beings behind it and it's going to play out like. The classic, like Frankenstein, where you build it and then it comes back 
and kicks the shit out of you. But like, <laughs> I think, you know, a lot of people looking at us like, like human beings as a collective, what, what are we doing? We aren't doing anything. You're expendable. I'm expendable. We're an annoyance to them. What, what the reason why we're still here is because we pay taxes. We pay interest. They got their foot on the back of our fucking neck and we're helping to buy like some more fucking gold coins for them every single month. But know? eventually, but the, but the thing, the, the big flaw with human beings is that we complain and we pay attention and we go, hey, that isn't fair. And I think super rich people are sick of it. And it'd be great. Wouldn't it be great if we could somehow get them to just work, not bitch, and not have to pay them at all? What is the solution? Let's make some fucking robots. Yeah, but then, you know, the robots would be great. But then who are we going to fucking pull over to the side of the road and have them suck our dicks in the back of our limos? Well, we got to make them more lifelike. So they're going to try to make these lifelike robots that will do whatever the fuck they want and suck their dicks and work out in the fields and all that fucking shit. But then eventually they're going to get overrun. So you are concerned about artificial intelligence then? No, I'm not concerned about it because there's nothing to stop it. I just was talking to you about it, and your main focus is the strawberries. Right there, (laughs) that little microcosm of that fucking conversation is why I tapped out of conspiracy theory. I will not talk. I mean, I'll just – I'll do it on this podcast because I don't have to listen to somebody else um, either saying, that's fucking bullshit or or this or that or that or or here's my even crazier theory because I'm nuts. Everybody's fucking nuts. Uh, Everything has – the thing I believe, everything has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And uh, human beings are no different. And, uh, you know, whatever. I'm going to you know, die anyway. So what the fuck you, do I you care? You were talking about rich people <clears throat> being annoyed by non-rich people. I was just reading something online that was talking about a dear prudence, you know, like an advice column over the weekend or something. And there was a rich person that was saying, you know, I live in a very wealthy community. And... Um, You know, there are billionaires and stuff around us. For the most part, like the street where I live is just doctors and lawyers and things. Anyway, we just notice that every Halloween, there are all these people from the poor neighborhoods that come in and like, you know, trick or treat and ask for candy. And I just really feel like we're already doing so much, you know, and paying so many taxes for this, that and the other. Like, does Halloween now have to become a social service? And basically the advice giver was like, wow, like you are an asshole. Like it's Halloween. It's kids and candy. Like, are you really trying to make a bigger statement about society over Halloween? Wait over Halloween a minute. Candy? Wait a minute. That's you bullshit. canceled Halloween I at canceled our house. Ha- not because of any sort of, like, class issue. I canceled Halloween because people were coming over here acting like fucking morons. I don't want 40-year-old people just standing there dead-eyed looking at me like, what's up with the candy? Or high school kids who don't well, even isn't, have... Well, isn't that what this have, guy's saying in a way? don't even have the decency. All right, well, then just take the age of the people out of it. High school kids who don't even have the decency to come in a fucking costume, who don't even have the decency to say trick-or-treat. They stand there staring at you. You would get an applause break in this guy's gated community right now. Yeah, yeah. But it's like coming in a costume. I usually don't like women of color, but this one makes sense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Come in here and be like fucking weird about it. I don't care if, if whoever, any kid that comes into the neighborhood from wherever they are. Halloween is awesome in that way because it's cute, fun kids. They're excited about going out. They're with their parents. Their parents are like, say thank you. Say like, it's a lovely thing. You give out candy to eight o'clock at night and then you turn the light out. Exactly. That's, that's the thing. I just, the, the kids that come with no costumes and it's like, I'm afraid they're going to egg the house. So I feel like I have to give them candy. Like it's bullshit. It's annoying. I just want people to to reciprocate the the spirit of halloween okay it's Can not I ask just a question? Me handing out candy can i you, need a little something from you too can you imagine time. you're so broke that you look forward to halloween so you can fucking walk up and try to get a candy bar from another adult do you and realize how sucks. fucking demoralizing that is no, i mean i'm saying does. this but no, we're, we're, we're getting we're getting off track we're getting it's off terrible, track there. but it's but there's also freeloaders out there too but this like, this is the thing mm-hmm. this is the thing nini is what that guy is saying is how a lot of rich people view people who aren't rich. We, uh, we should be privileged that we're in their um, um, presence. Yeah, like that well, type of guy. That type of like guy. That. Do you think that that type of guy would give a shit if the rest of the world got phased out and was replaced by robots that would work for him, would never go on strike, and were so lifelike that he could fuck them? 
and it would feel like he was with the person. I mean, that's their idea of utopia because they're fucking sociopaths. Not all of them, but generally speaking, they're sociopaths. Is that the beginning of most, uh, yeah, sci-fi novels? And it's like the convenience of it, and it's great, and then the robots eventually take over? Yeah. Because they're smarter than us, and they've somehow been able that, to continue that, to evolve beyond our programming. Right. Which is kind of like what her was about a little bit. And then, so. yeah, and then basically what happens is, is then they forget that, like, they don't know how to... Uh... Well, actually, a sci-fi movie, what would happen was there'd be a few humans that they allow to live... And then we work for them. It's basically the Planet of the Apes fucking template over and over and over again. And then, okay. and then we come back and either Mark Wahlberg or uh, <laughs> Morris Chestnut or one of those fucking Ooh, guys. Morris Chestnut, please. Would be um, – is that really his name? Yes, it is. That sounds like the name of a cat. Morris Chestnut? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> like somebody who like lives with cats and not people and then all of a sudden just like – and gives him like real names. Morris Chestnut. That over there, that. that now that's a, Morris Chestnut. A strapping, hunking, chocolate piece of gorgeousness that's in movies. You've never said that about me. <laughs> All right. Uh, advice. Okay. Nope. I sound like Aisha on huh? Archer. I sound like Aisha on Archer. Nope. Is. Um, All right. Advice. Hey, Bill. Fellow redhead here in need of some advice. No, Jesus. No, Jesus. Another freckle face here. I'm 21 years old, and after two years of college, I decided to drop out because I didn't. I simply didn't see a future that would make me happy. Smart move. You need to regroup. Figure out what you want. I know I may have burned a bridge here and made an irrational decision, but I really couldn't take any more of it since I felt like I was wasting my time and effort and my dad's hard-earned money since he paid for the tuition. My parents aren't exactly ecstatic, but they are not furious either. I have a job and all that stuff, and I've been playing guitar for nearly four years now, so I'm not bad, but not nearly as good as I want to be, considering I like metal and crap like that. I'd really appreciate some advice on whether or not I made a terrible decision because part of me said I did and another said I didn't. Uh, should I simply be more open-minded about my future, or should I pursue my dream of being a musician, even though that's extremely uh, far off, I think you meant to say, far off and unrealistic. Deep down, I feel like I'll figure something out because I always have in the past uh, when something big comes up and whatnot. Thanks in advance. Really like your work and your podcast. You cheer me up with your jokes when life gets me down. All right. Yeah, dude. Go to music school. Why don't you go to music school? You're 21. You dropped out of college maybe because uh, it just wasn't – they didn't offer the kind of curriculum you were into. So you said, hang on a second, I've been playing guitar for nearly four years now, so I'm not bad, but nearly as good as I want to be, considering I like metal and crap like that. Why don't, why don't we sort of take this back to the first advice that you gave? Why don't you find don't like a... Don't tell me what to do. Why don't you... Shut up. You why look you go- gorgeous this morning, by the way. Thank you. See how you do that, people? Oh, shut up. Um, yeah, anyways, <laughs> Just go to, I uh, meant it. I meant it. Go to... Uh, why doesn't he go to music school? Here's the deal. Enroll you in a, a music program so you can get better. Um, <laughs> play guitar, keep playing guitar every second. It's like the first advice you can give. Play guitar. Well, here's all the, the, here's the big here's the big thing in this email. <laughs> is that you heavy That's metal? That's my impression of red, metal. <laughs> um, this is why school is so fucked up. This guy is literally ignoring his heart, staying in school because he's following the fucking herd. This guy wants to play guitar, dude. I, let me ask you this: How happy are you? When you're playing guitar, when you're doing other activities, are you thinking, I wish I was playing guitar? That, that's what you're supposed to be doing on whatever level. And if you think you're not good enough, like you've been playing guitar for four years, you can be a rhythm guitarist in a band. How cool is Malcolm Young? He wrote all those fucking riffs for ACDC. The poor guy's got them He's sick now, man. It sucks. Um, but anyways, like uh, that's what you do. Join a fucking band. Just join a band. Go down to the music store. They always have those fucking things. A uh, little, little, we, we're looking for a rhythm guitarist, Liars. looking for this. Yeah, those little fuck. Just do that. And just make your whole life about music. Give guitar lessons. Just your whole fucking life becomes music. And then eventually you're going to be, you're going to be in the music world. You might end up, uh, who knows, being a producer, 
For albums, you might end up being in a band that makes it. You might end up managing band. You're going to be in the music business. You're going to be around music, which is what you love, okay? I think there's a reason that you did it. I, I think the, the reason why you're thinking, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that is because 99% of your friends are all, you know, well, I got two more years of college and I majored in this and then I'm going to go out in the job world. I'm going to get married, have two and a half kids, blah, blah, which is fucking fine if that's what you want to do. But you do not want to do this. You want to play guitar. So you made a great decision. Congratulations. And the balls that that took... To fucking walk away from college? I didn't have the balls to do that. I felt like I had to finish. I got to get a degree. I got to get a degree. And uh, I should have just went right down to a comedy club. I knew from the time I was 14 years old that I wanted to be a stand-up comic. And it took me until I was 24 to finally get the balls up to do it. So you're way ahead of the game. You're going to be fine. All right? And I got to go to work here. So that's, that's going to be it here for the podcast. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you to the lovely Nia for dropping in. You're welcome. The next time I'm coming, come on here, though, we need to talk about some of the stuff I heard you screaming about earlier. About what? Something about women and something ignorant that you say, which is, I guess, It's a fucking part of the joke. Course. What did I say? I don't they know. They have a bedpan smashed across yeah, the back. Yeah, you think that's, 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 that's talking, a wrestling were, reference. Were you talking about Ebola or something like that, too? <laughs> I don't know what it was. It was something like that. <laughs> something along those lines. Something, oh, speaking of that, ignorant I got to gotta, gotta read some advertising. Um, 